Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It, Paint It Live. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday evening. And here we go with another one of these. So I have a very, very crowded um, painting table in front of me. And that's because sometimes my batch painting goes out of control and I end up painting an entire guild all at the same time. So tonight we're really going to be doing a lot of like odds and ends work. Uh, trying to finish up these uh, engineers. I don't know if we're going to do that all tonight, um, but we're going to hang out, we're going to talk, and we're going to paint. All right, so um, I can show you guys where I'm at. As you can see, there it's, it's a very, very crowded uh, table right now, so I'm going to get some of this stuff off so I can show you, and then we'll get back to it. All right, so just give me a second here. Uh, for those of you who want to join in the conversation tonight, I am in the Discord, uh, of the Plate Painted Discord, and uh, we do have access to chat here. So let me know how uh, you want to proceed, and let me just make sure that my let me make sure that my desktop system sound is good. That looks good to me. All right, and I'm going to turn this. Uh, I'm going to turn the system sound back up so that we can hear whoever does join us in Discord tonight. All right, so uh, let's let's get going clearing some of this stuff off so that I can make the painting table a little bit more amenable for stuff like this. It's been a very... Uh, been a very this has been a very busy uh, project here for painting and um, I'm starting to get a little anxious because I do at some point need to jump back into commissions and that's one of the downsides to uh, to commissions is uh, yeah it's cool that you get to work on all this stuff but you're also you're also kind of on the hook to continue to get stuff done Ooh, let's make sure Let's get that in focus there. So, so we're looking at uh, Colossus right now, and uh, we'll get more of these underway. So, so yeah, that's Colossus, and of in particular note here is this uh, this wood pattern that I have here. So as you can see, it's a very green wood. Um, it still has some browns in it. It's got some blues in it, um, and I wanted to go with that with a really weird color wood because I I wanted these miniatures to be more sci-fi looking, and that also explains why you've got uh, why he has antenna on his head. The original plan was to swap the head entirely, uh, and I'll show you that on um, uh, I'll show you that on Locus, because Locus has the fully swapped head, and so do both velocities. All right, so let's go ahead and show you that. So uh, actually, let's just start with, let's start with velocity here. So this is O velocity. Let me get, uh, trying to get this focus just right. So here's O velocity, you can see the wood there. You can see some of the rose color elements, pink on the helmet. So it's a very, um, it's a it's a very infinity looking miniature. Um, and these miniatures in general just struck me as a lot more sci-fi. So um, so like last time, you can see here here is uh, vet velocity that we painted last time on stream and you can see uh, I changed the base to make the base a little bit darker the idea with there was let's let's let her pop a little bit more um, and I'm very happy with the results I'm very happy with where this model is right now uh, I don't foresee that I'm going to change much on her uh, I don't really want to add any more colors 
there's a lot going on with this model, but it's a very neat model. So, uh, so let's let's actually um, let's actually kind of let's let's reveal where this model is going to be. So, got to get the sticky tack off the bottom. That's always the the tricky part. And then we have, uh, like I said, this is usually the part that, uh, this is usually the time when, when I would hand the, a model like this over to uh, somebody that likes doing this kind of activity. It's a very meticulous activity. It's like a lotto scratcher, right? So I'm going to scratch this. Um, uh, I'm going to scratch this liquid mask off the translucent base and reveal the color of the base below, which has been like the new hip thing I've been doing with my with my guild ball teams and whatnot. So somebody messaged me. What is that all about? Hold on, I'll get to it. Just a second. Okay. All right, that's Sean. It looks like he's going to be hopping on here in a minute. But I'm going to I want to finish scratching this off so that you can see kind of where we're going with the the finished product. All right. There's just so much going on, right? So I when I first did the bases, I had like a brown color, a red color, and like a like a very tan color. And it was too warm and inconsistent. It was too inconsistent. And you can see this base here is a lot more dull. Which, you know, it's neither here nor there. It's a cobblestone base. That's the one thing that isn't sci-fi about about this miniature is the the, the the set is that I put them on cobblestone bases. I could have put them on um, like steel plate bases, but uh, I had too many guilds on steel plate bases. And then the, the other option was like um, brick herringbone. And then I was like, oh, I have too many guilds on brick herringbone. I don't have a lot of guilds on cobblestone. So I figured, well, you know, they are a steampunk. Cobblestone should be okay. And I think in this case, the cobblestone is... Uh, cobblestone is kind of just blending into the background and hopefully letting the model uh, pop a little bit more. So we'll see. I heard somebody jump into... Hello. The Discord. Oh, hey. What's up, Sean? Not much. How are you? Man. Good. Good, good. Just, um, I know I was telling you earlier, like, I can't tell when I'm actually going to be done with these. But this one I'm pretty happy with. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pulling the, pulling the masking off the base so that we could see the... Nice. So we could see these bases that I scoured the internet to get. Yeah. Uh, I forgot my paint palette. So there's that. Like I could I could do highlights on the cobblestone, but I kinda don't want to. Right? It's it's kinda nice that the cobblestone is just kinda hiding. And uh, it's really letting Letting this kind of um, desaturated palette 
shine a little bit more here. But yeah, there's, there's VET Velocity. So we can see what some of the finished product looks like here. Look pretty dope. Yeah, I really like the uh, the head swap on this. It really makes the model look a lot more sci-fi. Hey, buddy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hey, kiddo. Hi. Hi. Been avoiding this one model for so long. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I need to do it. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's move on. Here's the cricket. Nice. Hey, what's up, David Luff? Hello from Virginia. Hope you're doing well out there. So, cricket, as he, I, the wood is really cool. I was afraid to do it at first. I was afraid to mm -hmm. do that, like blue green wood. Yeah. But I really like it now. Uh, it came out really well. It's a very unique um, color. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I think, and it like it really screams sci-fi with these, yeah. which is what I was going for. It's like you know, let's. I've been playing too much PSO two, mm -hmm. <laughs> so so that desire to do something like more uh, sci-fi looking, yeah, came through. Definitely. I had to say, like, whenever you come up with, like, new paint ideas or paint schemes for um, models, they're always, like, way different from, like, you know, most people's standard color palette. Yeah, thanks, man. And this one was super hard. Like, I thought about this for a good couple of months. Mm. Um, when it actually started thinking about this when the lockdown started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, because I was like, I'm going to support Comic Quest. That means I am going to buy that silly half guild, half engineers guild that they have there. But I, yeah. you know, but I want to read, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to redo the whole guild. And, um, and I'm going to have time, you know, while we're all indoors, while it lasted, uh, to think of a new scheme. And I thought of, like, I think you saw some of the chats going on mm -hmm. uh, where we're talking about maybe doing like a nautical theme yeah, or even like a prehistoric theme. Like we were, I was going to do like bone, mm -hmm. make the wood look more like bone at one point. And then, uh, so those were, those are both really cool ideas. And I was thinking about, okay, how do I, how do I accessorize around that? How do I make those look a little bit cooler? Um, but, uh, nah, I, at the end I was like, you know, was, like I said, started playing PSO2 and I was like, oh man, I should make these, these sculpts look so sci-fi to me. Definitely. It, uh, it, oh, go ahead. Like, oddly enough, um, I just recently found out like from like watching, um, a nature documentary there's like a tree that's called like the dragon blood tree mm -hmm. I was like I've never heard of this and of course like you know when they actually cut into the tree the sap is like blood it's red right blood red yeah. and I was like that's really dope I wonder like you know let me ask my son about that Octavius have you ever heard of the dragon blood tree okay might be something for you to watch on YouTube that sounds kind of cool yeah. So, like, finding out about, like, the one tree that has the, um, mollusk worms from Thailand. Well, they're not worms, but they're essentially mollusks that just dig into trees and burrow themselves in there. Okay. So more mollusks are more like snails, slugs, yeah. that kind of thing. Cool. Apparently it's a, a delicacy in Thailand, I believe. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> They're like they're a relative to a clam, essentially. Yeah, that's, that's probably good. I like yeah. clams. <laughs> I eat that. You know, just found it like so basically a sea bug, and I'll eat that. It's delicious. True. <laughs> a 
Well, totally. Yeah, yeah, we would pay top dollar for a lobster shrimp. Yeah. What was that, son? Yeah, that's right. Isopods are basically giant roly polies that are in the ocean. It's a very good point. Would you eat an isopod? They look a little scary. I don't know. <laughs> I would. <laughs> if I was hungry enough, I would eat one because I. It probably would taste more like lobster. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, there, Octavius, there are a lot of cultures that eat basically anything in the water because that's, you know, seafaring cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Man. So I'm gonna I mean, have I, to get you a. I'm gonna have to get you a microphone for this show at some point. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I, mean, I do. I do find it funny that like the best fish in the world are bottom feeders. Oh, that you mean the tastiest? The tastiest. <laughs> I yeah. I I think that's a. Um, I don't know. I think that's. I guess that's a that's a um, a preferential thing. But I would agree with that for the most part. Some people mm. hate catfish. They hate just the taste weird. Of catfish. But I don't, I mean, most of the time people just fry catfish. So I'm like, well, we exactly. fry any fish. It's pretty much delicious at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but, uh, you know, Chilean sea bass is rockfish. That's a, that's a low dwelling mm -hmm. fish. Um, but I think I think some people would not agree with with you because the people that really yeah. like the hardcore tuna fanatics, people yeah, that yeah. love yellowtail and skipjack and all that kind of stuff, they might say no 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 school fish, or <laughs> I, I I don't know like one of the guys that works for me he's really big into fishing, mm -hmm. really big into fishing and he yeah. he eats he likes trout. Really. <laughs> I think trout is terrible. <laughs> I am not a fan of freshwater fish, personally. I mean, like, yeah. salmon. salmon. But salmon is like, saltwater and freshwater, so okay. yeah. I like salmon. Um, What was it? Red snapper is kind of like one of my favorites. And mahi-mahi. Yeah, but those are, those are both ocean fish, right? And those yeah. are both delicious. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> but I'm like freshwater fish. I, I don't yeah. know. You got trout. You got uh, what tilapia? Yeah. Uh, well, tilapia. Tilapia is like one of those random ones because it's a turbo fish. Essentially, yeah. it's like the catfish. Uh, what else is like? What else is freshwater fish? That's um. Uh, that the gobi. Well, the, the gobi that. Eels, yeah, freshwater eel. I have, yeah. you know, honestly, eel is kind of delicious. It's sad. Yeah. I have to admit that I. Eel. <laughs> yeah. I will tear into some uh, some eel. <laughs> yeah, I I also like eel, but it just makes me sad because I know eels struggle sometimes. Oh, they do. Up, to keep up with our fishing and our farming and all that. Got a little salvo here. <laughs> you did a great job on this uh, particular paint scheme. Thanks, man. I, you know, it took me a while to get here, though. As as weird as it, and it's kind of dull. Mm. The colors looked kind of dull on the humans, but yeah. it's okay. I mean, they're they they look they're unified with the um with the automata. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, here's my um spade. <laughs> yeah, your modified spade. Spade. I I took the the parts of angel that I liked and the rules of spade, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I made this model. Um, the funny thing is, I had a bunch of models heads lopped off all at the same time. And oh, really? I was like, who should get what head? 
<laughs> and I said, well, Spade makes so many of my lineups, and I really like the angel head. So, yeah. and it it's interesting. It, she's like a she. Maybe she's digging for treasure, right? She's got a shovel, yeah. and she's got the she she's got all the the rest of it's like mining gear. But I don't know. That looks good, though. I just really like. Angel, as you know very well, I I loved to field Angel with my Navs team, but she never did anything good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, what could I do with? I had another, I had another Angel, and I was like, what mm-hmm. could I do with this Angel? And I did, and I do not like the Spade head. I actually, it's so sad, but I have Spade's head right here. Uh, I left <sighs> off. It's just. It's just kind of boring. Ooh, can I see? minor cap. <laughs> Let's see if I can, if I can get that a little bit more. There we go. A little more. It's essentially, what her head is: plain minor cap. Yeah, it's it's just kind of boring. And I was like, eh, I'll do miners are. Their scheme is kind of boring. Their their human characters in particular, yeah. which is really just spade. Um. What's his name? Uh, yeah, you can sit there. We just, just yeah, go ahead and just move those. Um, put them on your, put them on that desk for right now. Thanks, son. Yeah, that desk. Um, yeah, Spade and what's that guy's name? The, the um, the blaster guy, and then uh, uh, and Shaft. Those are really yeah. the, the other miners models are really cool looking. <clears throat> but I I cannot play miners <laughs> and keep a clear conscience conscience can't can't do. I it. think that's usually my biggest problem with this game because you know I go into the game wanting to have you know essentially fun mm-hmm. and when you get you know games that are fresh white hot destruction easy wins and all that type of stuff it's like i kind of want to still have friends though <laughs> yeah that makes sense. well this is in the, the with the miners it's it's not even fun to be on the winning side of that because you're mm-hmm. you're basically playing like kevin says you're basically playing a non-interactive game where you just yeah. uh, just go i don't really care what the other player's doing i'm just gonna finish my plan and they can't stop me mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the sad, the sad truth there. And yes, I still, I Spade is a crutch. I feel like she is a crutch for for engineers, but I do love her so much. <laughs> you no, know, like her being on the engineer team, I don't feel as you know the seething anger from it because you know it just works like an oil machine. She's the no. well, she's the I, I see her as like she's like the analog to Fathom. Yeah. Where Fathom is fantastic on on her minor team and in fish, mm-hmm. and she's a she's just a regular super regular pick in fish. So there's yeah. models like Spade and um, Fathom and uh, uh, what's her name Cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. They're just they're just they're they're virtually auto includes with their major guild. Yeah. So. Yeah, just great, you know, having that one character. That's why I feel bad for rats, the rat catchers group. There's like no person on the team that you're like, yeah, send them over to. Yeah, you don't really. <laughs> Scourge doesn't really make lineups, and neither does uh, uh, what's her name? I forget the. See, it's been so long since we played Guild Ball. I um, Pelage. Yeah, Pelage. And Pelage doesn't make either lineup. So it's even worse. <laughs> Rat catchers need help. We'll just say that. Yeah. They're, they're decent, but that statement right there just means that, that their players could use a little bit of help here. I All think right. that's like the main reason why I always felt bad that you know certain teams weren't really looked at and they're like, well, what's what's really the problem right now? It's like mm-hmm. you mean, which are the Teams that aren't being played right now is what you have to be looking at. So here's hey, mother, here's a model like that just will not see any play at all. Just oh, yeah. bench it. I didn't have enough bases for everybody. 
-hmm. So I have so there I have three models that currently are not built, primed or assembled. And the sad the sad thing is um Ballista is one of them. Uh, <laughs> it's super sad because I love Ballista, but oh. he will not make my twelve. Not with the oh. way Pin Vice looks. Well, we'll we'll play some Pin Vice, but I don't see I don't see Ballista replacing Pin Vice. And I definitely think no one even with the improvements, I don't think anyone really threatens um Rivet's spot. Rivet is just too important. She is. I think for uh, Engineers 12, you play Rivet and whatever captain you prefer, which is yeah. kind of cool. It's I like they nearly got it right, in my opinion. If if they managed to somehow without breaking the team, if they managed to get the power level of Rivet and um and Ballista on par, I mean. Uh, Pin Vice and Ballista on par with Rivet, then Captain Choice would be specifically just a preference. And they yeah. nearly did it because Engineers are such a deep team. I consider them to be probably the deepest roster mm -hmm. in Guild Ball. They have yeah. very little they have very little trash, but sadly their trash is on the mascot side and hoist. <laughs> <laughs> and and what's his name is just a corner pick. The other miners player, I forget his name. Um, I know who you're talking about? He's yeah, fun. He's a very fun model to play, and I've fielded him a couple of times with mm -hmm. my um with my NGs. But he does not do he he can't compete with the likes of a Salvo or Spade. Or either yeah. of the velocities, he just can't compete there. And Nomad is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You're talking like that right there. There, I have a six. I have a six man right there. I can't. Yep. <laughs> and if I want to, you know, uh, and I'm not even. I didn't even mention Colossus, Ratchet. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't mention those other players, which are fantastic. And um, Harriet, those those players that still end up on sixes. Yeah, that are that are like they would be auto includes on other teams. That's how no, deep I... NGs are. Is is they have they have strong players like you know six I think they're what sixteen player roster or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they, in my opinion, on squaddies they go at least ten deep. Oh wow! And I can't really say that about a lot of other guilds. I'm trying to think like who else is a super who else what other guilds are also super deep um, uh, me, mm, well not yet don't know about alchemists yet but I could imagine that alchemists could go super deep alchemists are fairly deep fairly deep roster they're a deep roster but they're it's weird because their top their top half is so strong that it rarely gets changed out. But yes, they yeah. are deep. But uh, well, there's just like... Uh, let's see. Maybe Blacksmiths right now, but... I don't, I, see, I don't, I don't consider them as deep. Great. I don't consider them deep. I think they have... Fan, I think Blacksmiths tend to have... Certain selection teams. They, yeah, they tend to have these are like these are the strong teams, and they go maybe maybe eight deep in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think what makes them deceptively deep is their captain mechanic. Oh, I think it makes it gives you it gives you the feeling like you're running a deep roster, but mm -hmm. really you're you're gonna run six to eight models and maybe just change captain. I think it. it I, I think most of the that. time. What's that? I will definitely agree with that. But that said, I mean, there's still, there's still a, a, um, a really solid team. And I, I'm going to play that weird build that I was telling you about the the. the yeah. Fu. Yes. But I still have like here. I have their MVP on the table. She was mm. just sitting behind me. Ooh, she's not coming in very well here. Model is terrible. 
<laughs> in my opinion, that cast model is terrible. Needs a head swap. It's, it there's been. just not enough detail on her face. Oh. There were a lot of models where I was just kind of like, man, if the detailing and positioning of the stuff was a little bit better, you know, things would be great. Mm -hmm. um, Falconers. Falconers was a pain in the butt for me to paint. Yeah. Um, a couple of them just like painting faces was a chore. Oh, yeah. So Deep in, or they had like the bow and arrow kind of like way too close to other portions. To the feet, of yeah, and it, like <laughs> you're talking about, um, uh, what's his name? Matagi. As Matagi. Matagi's Ugh. got that double handed bow strike, and then you're in his, his elbow and his, yep. his extended oh, arm. Wow. I painted. Tend to cover his face. Yeah, it's true. Here's another potential MVP here, Nomad. Just ridiculously strong on whatever NG's team you decide to run him in. Yeah. It's like having uh it's like having Alloy Hearth on your team. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to that actually, but it's only it's only in one model, which makes yeah. it even more disgusting. <laughs> Like the kind of tack you can get to if you're running certain uh, rivet builds and you throw Nomad in there is just mm -hmm. embarrassingly high. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Ah, man. I just miss Guild Ball. Yeah, me too. This is... This is hopefully, this is the last team I paint during lockdown and we can start yeah. playing... What, am, what did I paint? Like three or four teams during lockdown? <laughs> I mean, um, I think that's what how much you did. Yeah, it sounds about right. So I painted... Um, well, I painted Cooks right before lockdown. Yeah. And managed to get a couple of games out of them. And, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then, uh, then I did Order. And then I did uh, Blacksmiths. And then this team. So that's four. So, uh, so yeah, that's, and I, that's, I don't know. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not planning on painting any more guild ball until we're back. Yeah, it's definitely. Like one of my, one of my clients or something sends me shepherds in the mail. Right. You know, which does look like a pretty fun guild to paint. Hmm. <laughs> they play not sure yet but you know they look crazy good to play they look it really strong seems that a lot of people that have gotten the time to play it because you know either they're if uh am i hostage their wives into playing it or children <laughs> Maybe. which was so like you want to play um, do you want to play minecraft you can play you can play on the other phone if you want Okay, just resting. Okay. My yeah. Play. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you could you could continue. Oh, I was just saying my my kids are running weird hours. The, oh yeah. The, yeah, so they were up late. You guys were up super late last night, right? And then today we got up late, and then went then you you went down, you fell asleep early again you fell asleep at like i want to say around five o'clock and then you just you just woke up again wow <laughs> so you're running some weird you're in some weird hours but hey it's summertime you know yeah not for daddy daddy still has to keep what's that it is summertime son well it's not the summer solstice Or, sorry, Summer Equinox. Yeah. No, Solstice. That's right. I mean... Mm -hmm. So funny how nowadays...
What's that, Sean? So funny how nowadays I'm not afraid of taking naps. I'm like, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's gray outside. I have no place to be. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. I used to be. I used I, I used to be so efficient at naps. I would so I would go to work. Well, I get up in the morning like at four forty five yeah. and I get in the shower, take a shower, um, get half dressed, go and then I would go down for a nap. I'd nap for twenty minutes and yeah. then get up, finish dressing, go to work. Then I would go to work. Uh, work four hours, and then during lunch, I would take another twenty-minute nap. So, it, it and it was really cool to just keep the day fresh like that. Yeah, you can definitely. take these like power naps because it feels like you know you're only working um, like four hours at a time, and then then you can sleep. And so yeah. that's what allows me to like you know paint until you know close to midnight or whatever. And then get up super early and do it all over again. Yeah. I mean that's that type of stuff makes sense on you know being able to do that because you know sometimes you run yourself ragged when you're just going straight for how many hours and then yeah. you're like no energy by the time that you get home. Well, I, I I read some studies that said that it's very very healthy to do that type of activity. Right to mm -hmm. power nap to do, you know, four hours of work or whatever, and then just power nap, twenty minutes, get back up. Not everybody can do that, oh. right? Some people just can't. Like I, I like if my wife, if she goes down for a nap, she's out for at least two hours. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and and I think a lot of people are like that, but you can, I think some people can. You can kind of train yourself to be like, okay, I'm gonna take. I can sleep very heavy for like 20 minutes and mm -hmm. get back up yeah. and then, uh, and then you should be good. I used to do that in my car after like I had lunch, I'd take like a 30 minute nap Yeah. Back up and then like, you know, back into work and just, you know, take care of everything else I have to do for the rest of the night. That's cool. Yeah. Like I want to brighten this model, but I kind of don't. You know what I mean? I like the detail that's going on. Mm -hmm. It's just not a very bright model. I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah. I guess I'm okay with that. I mean, it's it's nice to have a a, a model that's bright and eye popping from you know four or five feet out. Yeah, definitely. But that's not the style that these ended up. These ended I, up I think I think probably what you have wanted um this is like just me it was like mm -hmm. models I probably would have done like bases as you know neon base colors like neon cobblestone like uh oh, that reset interesting yeah between like the cobblestones like a neon color or something sure yeah that would have been interesting i'm I I would be paranoid that it would take away from my like pastel model, but I don't, I don't know. Sense. I think you could do it in such a way that it wouldn't. Yeah. I think you could. You know, I would have to look more at like Infinity paint jobs because <laughs> that's really where I'm drawing a lot of this inspiration from. Yeah. And I'm using Infinity bits to give them the sci-fi look. I did a on on Colossus. I did change his um, the position of his arm because mm -hmm. the the uh, the original one had his fist straight up in the air, and I always thought that was stupid looking because yeah. the original one had that straight up in the air also. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no. And plus, it makes him more annoying to try to put in a foam case. Oh. You know, I get right now it's super relevant. Yeah, yeah, fist in the air, dude. Revolution. <laughs> very, very. I'm, I'm sure when I post this on the internet, people can say, "What? Do black <laughs> lives not matter to you?" Because I changed the fist. <laughs> no, I'm just. Don't worry, you're Gucci. I'm I on was, here. 
I was just throwing the. <laughs> I just want him to fit. <laughs> I like mean, somebody's gonna say that. Some some idiot. <laughs> Uh, Why aren't you? Definitely. Oh God! Like, I, do I have to make a statement with the model? Really can don't. Play, <laughs> can I just play some guild ball? Hey, I mean, I've gotten to that point now where I look at how much space in a foam case is this thing gonna take. Mm -hmm. If I notice that the arms or the legs are like really outlandish, and you know can't fit anything in there properly, then I'm just like, nope, I'm I'm making an executive decision. I'm fitting everything so that it looks proper and fits in the case. Yeah, sometimes you don't buy the model. You're like, eh, no. Or you just, uh, like I said, in my case, I, I look at it and go, well, I'm going to have to reposition that arm or trim them. Now, this is funny, too, because this is the resin... Resculpt Colossus, and they still couldn't get him to fit cleanly on the 50 mil base. This is weird. No. Why? Why can't he do that? Try. Well, I'm sure he fits cleanly on his resin base. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't even know if that's true. Do I still have that resin base, or did I throw it away? I may have thrown it away. Is it one of those no, I think it's. I think this is it. No, this is for the goal. But no, 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 this one right here is for Colossus. This is Colossus. Oh, yeah, look. See, it's got these little, mm -hmm. these three little divots. That's where you stick his legs. That is so stupid. It is. They could not fit him on a 50 mil base. The miner's version, the miner's um, OP kit version does actually fit. Oh, wow. It's actually a great. That's why that sculpt is amazing. He doesn't have his fist up in the air. Um, and he looks... And he's got that cool, like, mining gear on. He's got drills for on his hands. And that model actually fits on a 50 mil base. Yes. And I was like, oh, maybe they had it fixed. And then I put this model together. Which and is, then you're like, nope. <laughs> nope, still doesn't fit. So... A buttery trash. <laughs> See, geez, where's this is this is this kind of stuff that I would just hand this model to Yvonne and she would have this all cleaned up already. <laughs> <laughs> she does seem to like the mundane task like, of like do you, Yeah. Do this for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's Meanwhile, that? Mike I am scratching it off with my nails. Thanks, son. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here uh, working on a... Uh... Oh, hi there. <laughs> oh, hi. My dog just came running in. <laughs> uh... We're doing the room. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> But uh, Mark, we got to get Mark back on feet at some point. I know. Where has he been? <laughs> we got shit to discuss, Mark. Where are you? <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, like right now, I'm working on this uh this Prince model that I've been like avoiding for a bit because like trying to do it in a proper way and make it perfect, but it's kind of difficult <laughs> you mean uh, prince the artist the artist yes. <laughs> formerly known as prince that's exactly. amazing what scale is that um well you're gonna laugh it's from the black plague ox oh it's a zombicide character oh cool yes um you know like my friend ended up giving me his to paint and then i also ended up buying myself one as well so, it's just kind of been a while because I keep on wanting to go and paint this thing, but then each time I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do it right. <laughs> Did it make you nervous? Yeah. You're a little you intimidated? Me. I would be. I'm a little... Because I, I, I'm like, yeah, I got to get prints right. Us. I was uh, intimidated when I was painting Jack Burton. 
Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Big Trouble in Little China and Bruce Lee when I painted the Bruce Lee model. Yeah. I was like, oh, I really got to get this right. And um, didn't the low pan model also have uh, was in the game as well? Yeah. For some reason, I wasn't I wasn't as intimidated by that because I feel like low pan has you, there's so many effects on low pan that mm. you know you I feel like you have a little more leeway. But like I guess, but yeah. Like Jack Burton, like his shirt is sculpted. Mm. You have to paint the shirt right, yeah. or else it's like, what's the point? Why did you Why did you buy that set if you True. couldn't paint True. If you couldn't paint Jack Burton in that dope tank top he has? Yeah. Um, I mean, like I ended up having to paint Mr. Wong as low pan, to, you know, to do it off of a blank slate was. Mm-hmm had a really challenging because it's like could have done the easy thing and just you know the guy in a blue robe and so the easy route i'm like no he's gotta look like low pan yeah oh gotta i get the dragon uh crest (laughs) on the shoulders and all that like man this is gonna take me at least 10 days or something in order to get right Still, this is still one of the best sculpts in all of Guild Ball. That is dope. And he still doesn't see the field. I mean, I yeah. he's in my 12. I still put him down because he's dope. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I thought, what did he get in this the last update? I thought they, did they give him anything or not? Maybe not. Um, the last update? I don't think he got anything. I don't think so either. Like, I think it was one of the ones where people uh, like, guys, ah, walk past that one. I mean, I still love him though. Like, yeah, uh, four point one. You know, I, I still I I I understand that Colossus is a head and shoulders the better pick. Hmm. But look at this model. Yeah. Like, of course, I want to feel that. That's awesome. It, this sounds weird. Whenever I hear um, like Colossus, most of the times I always think of season two and season three Colossus, where I'm like, "Why is he here?" <laughs> maybe you know. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe this is going to sound really weird, but maybe uh, there are some times where he takes Salvo's place, and you feel me. And you field him and Colossus because he does have a remote controller. Yeah. And in a pin vice list, that gives you crazy strong ability to mm-hmm. boost damage, to chain activate, free passing. Maybe Be something he to makes test. that squad yeah. instead of Salvo. Might and, and be then, something you know, to and, test. And, and really just spade ends up being the um, ends up being the non automata striker yeah. right? maybe maybe you run uh, well, maybe you run spade uh, spade colossus uh, locus and mm-hmm. vet velocity that's yeah. freaking cr- with a in a pin vice list yeah. now I you can only see that. have you only have one Eight inch kick because mm-hmm. you don't really count the cricket, yeah. but you have free passing, you have tooled up, you have chain activation, um, and you have increased speed. Mm-hmm. I might have to try that. Yeah, I, I'd say that probably would be the list to try s- once everything's yeah, back can- to norm. And I can see Locus. I can I can see Locus really doing well in that list, especially with Colossus in there. Like mm. that's a lot of beef to cut through. Yeah. And you have to deal with, and you know the squishy target is our our Spade and Velocity. Spade mm. can be very difficult to get. Yeah. Unless unless she's going in for early goal, and mm. Velocity at least has um, reanimate. Yes. Damn. That's the good thing about her. Yeah, I mean, that 
that's not well, bad. Well, it'd be the to try once you come back to gaming again. And I do like I do like Vet Velocity in there for Lend a Hand. Hmm. Wow, that's not bad. It's too bad her her tack doesn't go up to astronomical levels like with Rivet. But hmm. that's interesting. That's very different than the uh, Angie's I was running prior to lockdown or prior to 4.2, yeah. which was a lot of humans, right? It was it was Spade Salvo Nomad and Colossus. Yeah. And Colossus doesn't have reanimate. Like that, that would be awful. You'd be like, you yeah. fi- I finally killed him. No, he's back. Like <laughs> back in the game, man. This oh, dude no. does have reanimate though. And that's pretty <laughs> disgusting. I finally can mm-hmm. now he has reanimate. <laughs> that is fairly disgusting. I don't uh, know, maybe I'm, he makes that I'm gonna have to play that lineup just because I like those are just models that I like. Yeah. Hmm. That makes sense in order to try. Yeah, so most of these are getting getting close to finished. Uh here is Pin Vice. Um she's so very Borg looking. Mm-hmm. I love the new sculpt. Um, I there is one more thing I want to do for her before I like finish and pull her off. So I'm not, but I'm not going to do it tonight. Yeah, I'll work on that tomorrow. But she's mostly done, and so that really just leaves the um, the human characters like Harriet. Mm-hmm. So I got a little work to do on Harriet. She looks like Joker. I didn't do that on purpose, but she's got the kind of does. Yeah, <laughs> she's got. She's very Joker looking. Uh, well, what is left to do on her? She's actually pretty. Well, I just need a little bit of highlighting on the wrench. It looks like just a little bit. So there's her. Um, and I got uh, Ratchet. Mm-hmm. Who is amazing, and he still doesn't make a lot of my sixes. Which is sad. He's all. He looks almost done. He's nearly done. Just again, just minor. St- oh, I have to paint his entire backpack. So ah. there's that. Okay. And then, uh, and then finally we got uh, we got Rivet, who mm-hmm. I did do a head swap on. Whoa! Can't actually get her to focus. Too much shadow. But um, yeah, I did a head swap on her. I wanted more of like, one like more of like a ponytail yeah. thing going on, and this this makes her look a little more like anime looking. Like again, I was going for PSO two. Yes, <laughs> That's definitely. My theme. So it's like, how do I put cat ears on her? I could do that too, <laughs> which would have made Mark super happy. But um, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so. So those are so those are the three I'm working on, and then the goals. Um, so this goal is this goal is nearly done. The goals are surprisingly nice. I like them more than I thought I would. This goal here needs a little more work too. Okay. They're cool looking though. I still need to buy um what you call it uh in order to complete the union set. Mm-hmm. Like I'm missing Blackheart's box and a hemlock or to complete union. Just regular hemlock? Yeah. I'm I'm sure I'm sure CQ has that. Probably. Or did you already check? Um I'm not sure. I haven't checked in like the latest, but you know. Just considering that I had like Different one-off models of um, characters, but not like mm-hmm. the whole set. I ended up finishing um, a six range, uh, the Rage Box team minus Hemlock. Okay. Uh, then I was just like, "Well, I kind of need to get the others." So, yeah, uh, well, and I, I may be, I may swing by there tomorrow, so I, I might be able to check for you. All right. See if they cool. got it. All right. So, whoops. So yeah, that's where we're at. That's what we're gonna. So we're gonna 
paint those other three. And you can see I kind of went in order of what I was planning to field. Because uh, mm -hmm. I am planning on playing um, against Bing uh, yeah. hopefully next week. Okay. I didn't do it this week, but hopefully next week. Mm -hmm. And we'll do masks and gloves and the whole thing and all. Uh, and I'll try to record it. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right. So, so there's this. All right. So, um, you know, we, so we were talking a little bit earlier this week. <laughs> Actually, I think it was yesterday. <clears throat> over, um. Over, it was about it was a subject that we don't ever discuss on this show and it because it's never really been well no it's not true we do we have discussed it a little bit on the show but it's never really been that important right mm. we've uh so you know it, uh, we 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 hop on this feed and we like to talk about um gaming and hobby and, and that kind of stuff. And that always, in my mind, that always becomes, that's always the most important thing. That's the reason why we're here. Right? Definitely. But uh, as I showed you, I got, in the, I got into some arguments on the internet <laughs> <laughs> Friday over, um, it was over a post that uh, GW put out, right? And, oh, so GW put this thing out. Yeah, GW put this thing out, and let me see if I can. Um, I'm gonna let that dry, and let me see if I can find it so I can share my screen with you. So hang on one second. So they put this. Oh, uh, they put this out, and um, you know it. It's fairly. It's a it's a fairly banal post, I guess mm -hmm. is what I'll say. But it's all it. But somebody asked an opinion on it, mm -hmm. and well, let's just find it. Hold on. I know I saw it. Um, actually, before it even somebody sent it to me on PM because they also thought it was, we'll say, amusing. Mm -hmm. uh, where'd it go? the hell where is it he was the one who, oh no maybe maybe it wasn't from him let's see uh let's see if i can find it here we go okay and at its core there's nothing wrong with this, but there sort of is. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me uh, let me switch over here to share screen if it will allow me to. You know, as is tradition, uh, always something weird that they put in there. Uh, let's see, screen capture. Uh, let's let's do let's do a window capture. Okay, and I'll blow this up here for just a second, mm -hmm. and then we'll then we'll remove it. All right, are are you looking at what I have on Discord? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so wrong. here we go. So here's the here's the post. Warhammer is for everyone, which right there, no, it's not. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I won't read it to you, but basically it says, hey, you know, we want to be nice and good in a good community and show. Values of mutual kindness and respect, blah, blah, blah. Our setting is grim and dark, but we don't really believe in that. But we want to be inclusive and all this other stuff. And then and then at the end, it was like, and if you feel the same way, uh, wherever, whoever you are, we're glad you're part of the commu Warhammer community. If not, you will not be missed, right? So on its face, you're like, okay, that's, that's fine. Thanks, brand. I like that. That mm -hmm. the thanks brand thing. Yeah. I'm gonna remove this. 
How do you delete this? Do you just delete it? I always find it funny whenever they put up, like, uh, you will not be missed. It's like, mm, um, okay, well, you know. Thing. <laughs> I'll, 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 we'll, yeah. Oh, man, I can't remove it. Should be able to just delete that. Anyways, we'll just, we'll go back to here and I'll figure that out in a little bit. Well, here's the thing, right? It's, they're basically saying, we're inclusive to everybody. And if you're not inclusive to everybody, we don't want you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, on its face, sure, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Right, you mm -hmm. want to have everybody there, and you don't want to have um, haters and whatnot. Uh, exactly. But the the issue that I have with that is usually when this sort of, and I'm just going to call it out for what I see it as, is sort of, you know, brand virtue signaling that mm -hmm. happens is people get so gung ho, they get so worked up over yeah. how virtuous they are, and it starts mm -hmm. this. It starts this pissing contest yeah. between, and I'm just going to call it out, it starts this pissing contest between white people with like, oh, I'm I'm really not racist. Well, I'm super not racist. Well, I'm so not racist that I will fucking kill all the races. Oh, yeah, well, mm -hmm. I will kill and burn and slay the races. Well, there better not be any races here. You better get off my lawn, boy. Yeah, race, I'm yeah. going to round up the whole town. We're going to show up in front of your lawn and burn a cross on your lawn, racist. And you're like, whoa, whoa. I know. <laughs> you're now becoming the monster you claim to that you are not going to be. Defeat. Like, what is that saying about you when, yeah. you, when, you, when, when you're the, the person that is like, and that's exactly what this did. Mm -hmm. because they posted that and a lot of people were like, yeah, you know, I love everyone, you know? And it's like, like, like thumbs up, <laughs> like that. And it's like, like high fives, you know? <laughs> patting each other on the back. Yeah, man, you're so virtual. And so there was that side of it. Yeah. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh crap, damn it. And then you look at the, and then there's the other side of it, mm -hmm. which was like, yeah, I, it just tells you how fucked up people are. I'll go out and I'll ruin their lives. I hate racists and I'm instead. And you're like, oh god, not this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then there's some people who spoke up and said, hey, you know, not that I disagree with it. Mm -hmm. but this whole thing seems rather contrived. Yeah. And it seems rather, it seems like pandering, and. Worst case scenario, it even seems a little patronizing, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, so I got into this argument over that because I was like, "Yeah, I kind of, I, I, you know, uh, as one of those people you want to be inclusive of, or you yeah. say you want to be inclusive of, I do find mm -hmm. this message to be a little pandering. I do find it to well, be a little bit, yeah. And 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 I guess in order to explain that, um. I have to go, and I want to hear your. I want to hear your um, kind of a little bit of of your background, how you got into gaming and whatnot, because it's pertinent, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, definitely, I'll 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 explain like my background and and you know what what it was like to to get into hobby, and when I say hobby, I'm not even just talking about like miniature gaming. I'm talking mm -hmm. about comic books. Uh, science fiction, um, yeah. RPGs, you know, D and D, that kind yeah, of thing, right? Definitely. So, you know, here's the thing. Like I said, I I, I grew up, um, uh, I grew up in the '80s, and <clears throat> I grew up in, you know, I was born in Kansas, right after the Vietnam War, <laughs> uh, <oof>. which is <laughs> a very Lord. interesting, interesting <laughs> place to be. But there were a lot of wonderful, warm-hearted people in Kansas, yeah. and, uh, and a yeah. lot of just outright blatant racist people mm -hmm. um our only you know one of our only friends in in the neighborhood was a, a family of uh, a black family yeah. and you know we kind of shared common bond like we kind of understood mm -hmm. like what it was like to be other and oh, yeah. and then you know we went from uh we went from kansas to connecticut in mm -hmm. the 80s and a lot of people don't talk about this but connecticut in the 80s 
was rolling deep in the clan <sighs> in the 80s. I know a lot of people don't you mean you know you may you have you probably have uh, to talk to somebody alive that was alive back then uh but yeah clan was rolling deep in, yeah you wouldn't think so considering that it's like in the north <laughs> yeah well that in you know connecticut now is sort of it, connecticut now is sort of like uptown liberal so they're yeah. very much on the other side of that spectrum <laughs> so anyways um so growing up in connecticut same thing right like they yeah. were the white kids and the kids that that I hung out with like my main group of friends was mm-hmm. one of them was black one of them yeah. was jewish the other two were italian that was <laughs> you know <laughs> that's kind of we, you know that was kind of our that was kind of our crew uh, yeah. in connecticut right so uh so then we move out to california right and then there's brown people everywhere and we're like oh wow mm-hmm. this is interesting but the, the thing is being other for that period you find yourself you know being more interested in in some of these other types of hobbies because one they're really cool two Mm -hmm. they're escapist or they're they're escapist like they um in other words like uh the the other people go getting into those hobbies we're also escaping some sort of prejudice or belittling of their own, bullying of their own, right? It was, you know, these days a lot of people say, oh, I'm a nerd. Nah, that makes me so goofy. And I'm like, dude, if you called yourself a nerd in the mm-hmm. 80s, in the, in the yeah, early, you would have got, got your ass beat, right? <laughs> people would have, and not just the jocks, like everyone thinks and they remember... No, the fucking normies would come after you too. The mm-hmm. girls would come after you too. What's the matter? Never kissed a girl. So the <laughs> so the other hey, people wrong. that were in these hobbies were also other. They also in whatever in, in their own experience in their own you know it's not the it's not quite the same thing. My my mm-hmm. um you know what I had to deal with regarding prejudices. I'm sure is very different than what you had to deal with but it's also at its core it's also very similar right the experience the individual experiences are different but the source of them and the the overall feeling of being an outsider of not being um generally accepted like Mm -hmm. you get that i get that and so did everybody else that was coming into the hobby at the time they all got that so regardless of how they felt politically, um, we all had that in common. And mm-hmm. when, you, when you're in the hobby, the focus and the, the unifying part is the, is the activity itself. Definitely. Right? And so it was really – and so for a lot of us, it was, it was really uh, a really um, – I guess an, a, uh, an eye-opening time. Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh man, you know, I, ma- I made friends with, uh, you know, I made friends with like a forty-five-year-old white guy that was a police officer, and I would have never made friends with him mm-hmm. if we weren't playing miniature games together. I, you know, exactly. I made friends with, uh, I made, I, I made friends with an actual, um, uh, like skinhead, like oh, an wow. actual white nationalist, uh, playing, like. 40k and those kinds of things and he would say the worst things he would say the most awful things before you got into gaming and you're like oh what the hell is this guy right <laughs> you're and, like is this but, a Jekyll and Hyde situation yeah. or but here's the thing too like we knew at least at least I knew growing up that <laughs> it, especially in Kansas and Connecticut I knew that most of the people I run into would hate me for no real reason oh, yeah. and so so the point was you, you you had to let them discover you as an individual and understand that you're a person. And that's really where change begins, right? Because it's like – and especially with the – like I said, when I was gaming with the skinhead guy, he was like, man, you know, I feel this way. Um, you know, I feel like – and I won't get into his specific beliefs, but he, he was telling me, he's like, hey, you know, but I – Starting to realize, like, I always thought you were cool, 
and I never really thought about your race. And I'm like, exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the point. We're all here to enjoy something together. And you never even thought about that. Oh. Uh, and that was that was the cool thing about it. Right? Was oh. that, you know, if, if I like iron like a white kid growing up didn't know anything about Asian culture, but he read Iron Fist. And because mm-hmm. he was like, oh, you know, that character is really cool. And I'm like, I love Iron Fist too. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a white dude, but that was kind of cool also. He was an other. He was a fish out of water. We yeah. un- And I understood that. And that – so I guess what I'm saying is the people that were attracted to this hobby, we were all sort of picked on mm-hmm. or – or prejudged or counted out uh, yeah. or othered in some way or other. And now, well, now it's like in the middle of that when we're, we're starting to unify. And this is a safe haven for us too. It's like, man, mm-hmm. I, don't de- I deal with enough of that shit in the real world. Oh, yeah. Right? I want to come here and I want to paint my models and I want to game. It's part of the reason why I don't really talk about it too much on the streams because mm-hmm. when you come here – to paint and talk about Gil Ball. Like we don't, we're not here. And, it, and, and that's why, that's why I know when, when you and I were talking about this earlier, there was some hesitation about covering this. Yeah. It's like, Ugh. Cause it, you know, cause you're like, Oh, I don't really, this really isn't what we do. You know? start sweating a bit and you're just like, ah, this well, is I, uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I explained it to, um, because I explained it to a few people. Like I explained what mm-hmm. happened with my wife. I explained what happened with um, another fellow streamer. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it, and it was a group of streamers. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are jumping up and down about diversity and all this shit. And I'm like, on my channel, like one of my main, you know, one of the main people on this show, you, is mm-hmm. you're black. I'm not yeah. white. We have gay people playing on this street like like we win the bingo diversity card of That's miniature like gaming do. like we have more diversity than like the next 40 streams combined right this is true if if you're gonna if you're gonna do that but it, it never we didn't that even never play in that us. right we never really even played in those waters because it didn't uh, matter it didn't matter to us but because it matters to other people then and then this is the way it was explained. Like my wife is like, yeah, but it matters to these other people. Mm. Uh, they want to hear from you, and like they genuinely want to know. I'm like, well, if they they genuinely like, they're gonna hate my opinion. <laughs> and it's the truth. I mean, they will they will genuinely, and and that's I think the part that they're missing is like, uh, yeah, we're gonna be inclusive and all this other shit. And I'm like, if you really want my opinion, one, you will hate it. And two, yeah. you won't understand it. And yeah. three, you'll actually end up making this less inclusive. And that's – I don't know. I'll get to that argument later, but I kind of want to hear your – your like – I, I want to hear a little bit about like what got you into this hobby and you know if mm-hmm. – like, where you – did you ever – did you ever have a run-in like the one I told you about uh, that happened a couple years ago? I want to know something not as bad. Like it's you know what really I'm talking weird. about, right? The the, the two girls. That, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll explain that one up. in a minute, but I want I want well, to hear I want to hear your. Uh, uh, I, I luckily have <laughs> their somehow you no know, dodge bullets on that, or just kind of like you know <laughs> the, the the stars were aligned and all that type of stuff, and that didn't happen to me. But you know. Um, no, I haven't had, like, the worst situations where people would, you know, say some rather unseething things where you're just like, are you for real right now, or are you (laughs) just joking with me? (laughs) You know, you you have to be joking with me on that, but, you know. Um, for me, I grew up in, well, born in California, Mm -hmm. generally, in Coronado, which... Usually the military slash rich people town. Yeah. I didn't. I, well, I lived in 
in Coronado only for eight months before my dad, you know, we all moved over to Okinawa, Japan. So I grew up completely in a different area. Mm-hmm. No, I, you know, with people that are of my own skin color, you know, you're living on a military base. So, sure. you know, every once in a while you see like one other person, same skin color as you and all that. But otherwise, when you're out in the community, which it's kind of funny because a lot of people were like, I don't want to go out in the community because that means I have to go and, you know, learn Japanese and all that. Like mm-hmm. my mom and I, and my dad, we were all like invested in learning Yeah, you know, that we're able to go out and, you know, to the markets, you know, go to these big, you know, events and all that type of stuff because it was something different. You know, yeah. Uh, both of my parents are from Barbados and both islanders, so we're used mm-hmm. to island life. It's just kind of like one of those deals where it's like, oh, it's just a different island. You know? right. That's all we look at it as. So you know, me growing up, I grew but, but up. Oddly enough, and I'll, yeah. I'll get to it in a sec. But go yeah. ahead. <laughs> but, just uh, an odd like, you know, going and living in Japan. Of course, you know, me being the most different person there you know but you know later on i end up reading later down the line when i'm older about the one um black samurai yes that lived in japan mm-hmm. you know, because he was brought over by a uh, jesuit priest as like a bodyguard that's the most awesome infamous known like samurai in japanese history you know, even though they was different, but people had like a huge respect and honor for him because you know, him coming from Africa, you know, going to a completely different place that no one knows who he was. You know, half of the town thought that he was like some demon that, you know, came yeah. with he was an you know, <laughs> random people and other yeah. people were like, Oh, wow wonder what would happen if we actually got him on our side, you know, type deal. Right. So there was, like, a lot of respect and a lot of, you know, decorum about things. So, I mean, like, me as a kid, I was always like, oh, well, you know, as long as I follow Japanese rules, which, you know, every country has their set of rules. You just go by what, you know, doing. And, you know, same thought today. Which is no, like, yeah. <laughs> and people treat you like normal. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, he understands. Don't do this. Mm-hmm. Understands weight, or he understands. Hey, you know, uh, if you're gonna like, yeah, just how to be respectful in those cultures, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing that I was basically taught. And I mean, yeah, you know, there was um one uh professor wrestler that I listened to earlier today and he was talking about um, how things are right now and how shaky things were and you know, he wasn't wrong because you know even my parents taught me a lot of things are going to be difficult for you yeah. because they're different mm-hmm. I'm like okay you know that's fine you know, they explained to me hey you know you're going to have to work twice as hard you know, yep. you're probably going to have to, like, you know, exactly kiss butt every so often. But, you know, just you you mind your P's and Q's. You know, you say thank you. You mm-hmm. say, you know, all, all the manners that, you know, in Barbados, because they were run by Britain, it was just strict manners. You're sure. sick everyday manners, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean... That's why I learned, and that's why, you know, living in Okinawa was like a piece of cake for me. You yeah. know, I ended up growing up with random models and anime, like, straight out the gate. I think the first anime that I actually watched on TV was Astro Boy, and I was like, Oh, wow. You're four years old. It was yeah. just, like, on TV, and I just sat down and watched the entire thing. Oh, you know? Mind you, it was on a rerun. Sure, because um, Astro Boy is super old. Exactly. Yes. I was like watching Common Rider, Super Sentai, which is, you know, Power Rangers in the United States. Yep. Um, I was watching Dragon Ball, 
Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT before it even got to the United States. Mm -hmm. So it, it was kind of funny, you know, being in elementary school in like fourth grade. People are like, oh man, you know, Dragon Ball Z looks cool. It's like, I wonder what's going to happen on this next episode. <laughs> and of course, my brain is like, and you're like, man, you, know you haven't Ball even seen Cell right? yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, no, it just came out. It's fresh. It's like, no. Uh, not. I'm a dude. <laughs> like, there's people in Barbados that are watching this way before you <laughs> have gotten to it. But, you know, it. a lot of it was, um, for me, like, as a kid, I was an only child, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, even, like, when my parents were like, hey, would you like another sibling? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, just out, out of the gate, like, nah, I'm good. It's like, I, I got my own responsibilities to deal with. <laughs> I'm like, good. I don't That's need funny. to be looking after another sibling that may you know, ruin my, my cred right now. But, you know, it was kind of one of those things where growing up in Japan, I was always, you know, put in the forefront of, like, different media sure. styles. So, I mean, I used to, like, when I was little, always try to learn how to draw um, Dragon Ball Z characters or Sailor Moon characters. Nice. Or, I couldn't watch Fist of the North Star at the time, but I knew what the character looked like. Because, <laughs> <laughs> boy, howdy, that that was graphic yep. in that time period. But, um, you know, like, learning all the different uh Things about Japan and honor and respect and all that type of stuff and duty. I was so used to it. So, yeah. of course, when I came back to the United States, it was a weird culture shock for me because I was like, why are people so rude? Yeah. Why are people <laughs> not, like, be respectful? Like, mm -hmm. This kid just basically told off the teacher and he's, like, in third grade. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> You know, yeah. brain was just like I. I people <laughs> like this, and you know it. It's really funny that you know I'm bringing this up, you know, in this topic because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of Japan was was honor and respect. Yeah, in the United States, it just felt like everything else, and of course, you know, me being the age that I was, I didn't directly grow. You know, knowing about the Rodney King riots and all that type of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. So, because I was on the opposite side of the world. <laughs> being Dude, a I different... was graduating high school when that was happening. Exactly. That was nuts, so man. you know, for me, I was like, I didn't know that L.A. was like burned down, looted. Oh hell yeah! You no know, yeah. trash beyond belief. Had to get police squads from San Diego and San Francisco to come and help out L.A. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that this stuff was an issue because, you know, being, you know, a beta kid, it's like, you know, we don't deal with that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, when you actually go and look at the lens of, you know, once I started doing history and learning about, you know, the history of the United States and all that type of stuff, then you start realizing, man, there's there's a lot of junk in here that, you know, yeah, I can sure. understand the reason why people are safeguarding themselves. I mean, shoot, even once it got into stuff dealing with World War II, I, man, like, you started feeling bad about all the bad things that have happened oh. to Asian immigrants. Oh, so, for sure, man. Yeah. They would have, you know, their United States citizenship and all that, and you're like, why are you treating these people like trash when they, you know, went and worked, you know, for you in World War II, served, you know, in Vietnam, and still giving them crap about, you know, random stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, it's just like eye-opening in history. And I, I think that was like one of the main reasons why I enjoyed learning about history, because you learn all the... Problems and trials and tribulations of different countries and sure. you know, reasons why certain things happen and but you would always start realizing patterns after mm -hmm. a period of time, you know. 
why people were always insecure, uh-huh. which was basically the main problem of everyone in the world at the time, because it's like insecurities always make you realize, well, if they have it, then why can't I have it? It's like, oh, sure, okay, you know, <laughs> yet at the same time, a lot of people have to realize that you got to be inclusive, yet honoring other people's cultures. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, what, what about like your first foray into, uh, into like the hobby and stuff in the United States, like into miniature gaming or D and D or anything like that? Like what can you, can you talk about some of your early experiences and, so my first foray into um, gaming of um, you know I like video gaming type because you know yeah. everyone doing it. What uh, so Any you, what was it stuff. that you drew you that drew you there in the first place? I guess uh, it's something different to do. You know, okay. you could play video games as much as you want, but. There is something missing with, like, having a community that's, like, you know, behind you and all that type of stuff. So I think my first time actually, like, playing some game that isn't, you know, let's play Sorry or Boggle or, you know, that type of stuff, to be Magic the Gathering. Okay. And I did that when I was... uh, grade sixth grade okay and um it was so funny because it was like the most out of the blue type thing because you always hear about you know oh you know D D proprietors the devil and all that type of stuff yeah. magic <laughs> gathering same thing too and i'm just like i don't think that they're tarot cards or it's your devil's card game. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so of course my brain was like as a kid like reanalyzing all the dumb things that you know the adults were just spouting off about and like the first time that i actually played magic the gathering i was um in theater um because i was in a play during christmas that one of my um music teachers um had wrote okay and one of the well, i think three of the cast people um, were uh, basically when we didn't have anything to do at the time, we're in the back and like the guy is changing area, you know, listening to the monitor, but at the same time being able to do whatever. Yeah. And one of them like brought out, you know, Magic the Gathering. And I was like, oh, you know, what game is this? And it's like, oh, it's Magic the Gathering. Have you ever played it? It's like, no, but it looks cool. Like the cards looked interesting. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and all the different fey creatures and you know the ghosts and all that type of stuff so you know uh these three guys basically sat me down and taught me how to play magic the gathering and like uh two of the guys were um uh, see one of them was uh hey uh, he had tourette syndrome okay he knew all of the idiosyncrasies in the game. I was like, oh, you know, he would tell me about, like, you know, when to do this, how did you, you know, change, you know, play style, if you end up losing mana and all that type of stuff. So I was sure. like, okay, you no, know, this is really cool. Um, one of the other guys um, was uh, Caucasian, and the other guy was um, mixed Caucasian and African American. Okay. So, you no, know, we just kind of like, you know, they taught me how to play this game. They're really. Can I point cool. out to the to the viewers that you are not African American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even I though mean, you're you're black, but yeah. uh, it, that's just an idiosyncrasy that you have to deal yeah. with. As people go, oh, he's African American, but you're not. No, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know, whenever people are like, ah, oh, but you, it's like, you no. Know, because we're the people that you guys come to when you're on that cruise liner in order to come to our country. Yeah. <laughs> no. You and I can both say that we're islanders, and, yeah, and we're both right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, yeah. Although, like, um, 
So it was kind of fun, you know, actually getting to play with these guys. And, you know, I didn't have any ill will with anybody because I grew up in Japan. Yeah. It's just one of those deals where, you know, someone teaches you something, then cool. You know, if you like it. Yeah. Oh, you know, say thank you for teaching me this. You know, it may not be my thing, but I appreciate that you took the time in order to teach me this type of stuff. Right. Well, and then also, I mean, you, you were you're in a drama program with them and exactly. and they're they were the ones that invited you to play exactly so that's you know obviously those are those are all really good things right and you know and then i have to deal with anything with race or color or you know religion all that type of stuff because right. we all carry our own different baggage and you know like i think the next um game that I got into after that uh, Pokemon was like the wide <laughs> craze yeah. thing that everyone did along with Yu-Gi-Oh! But then once I got into college um, it was D&D. Okay. And the group that, I'm, that I was with was technically one of the few groups where you had so many different people of different origins know sexualities and all that type of stuff like yeah. our group was the most mixed that you could possibly find of any other group on the campus okay and That's cool. you know, this was me when i was playing at um in cal poly mm -hmm. and you know uh, the first group that i was in you know it was okay things things were fine i think the only thing that you know i ever had like a problem with was like when people would purposely get their characters in trouble and then like get the rest of the squad killed <laughs> okay so <laughs> from Leroy jenkins you know, type stuff or yeah you were jenkins or as i like to call it the barbarian syndrome even though that you're not bar being a barbarian <laughs> sure so, you go running forth in order to you know fight you know and guards the guards don't know that we're here i don't care i'm gonna go fight them <laughs> hey, pal, we're gonna die. Okay, thanks for that. Then, like, the second team that I was with, um, went, because the first team that I was with was, like, huge. I think we had probably ten people in this okay. game. So, it kind of got really messy. But the next group that I was in, um, you know, it was really together, you know, we had we had Two girls that were playing on the team, like mm -hmm. women were playing on the team, and you know there were like four of us guys that were playing on the team too. But you know we kind of had like that natural bond of like talking to each other and having fun. You know, after okay. we got done eating, you know, sure. done playing, we would go out to eat at like a restaurant or something, talk about you know. And what things we could have probably changed in the storytelling and all that type of stuff. Okay. So, I mean, it was kind of like that natural group camaraderie type deal where we felt like a family. You know? Okay, that's cool. And that's kind of how I felt once I, you know, after going back to San Diego and then coming back up here, being with the group that I'm in with you guys, you know, mm -hmm. it painted crew, as I like to call it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> felt that cr like that family type aesthetic too, where yeah. it's like you know we're happy to see each other. We're you know not like ah man you know. Yeah, there it's 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 almost instant acceptance. Like yeah, exactly. you're here to enjoy the game, so are we. Let's do that. Let's have fun. I mean, I mean even with like you know how the situations that have come and. And during the last three months, mm -hmm. uh, like actually getting to go to Comic Quest and seeing like Kevin and Aaron and um, well, someone else was there. Well, that's cool. Uh, you ran into. That's right. You ran into a bunch of people. Just running into you. like you know the guys. I'm like randomly. Yeah. I haven't seen them in ages, so it's just kind of like you want to catch up, even though that you have to stand six feet away from each other. But you know, <laughs> yeah, 
but you know it, it's kind of like one of those deals where when you start building friendships based off of tabletop gaming or you know you play gaming it's a lot stronger and you don't look at people based off of you know where they came from or what their lifestyle is and all that type of stuff because right. we all take bumps and scrapes in life just way that things are and yeah it's difficult but you know we all have that same respect for each other mm -hmm. I, you know it's a lot harder nowadays you see and you know in some cases i will say yeah sometimes social media is to blame on this one you know, it kind of brings out some sort of competitiveness some of us well there's like a there's a there's a bit of a moral panic going on. That yeah, that too. I but, feel like you know, you know it, it. In for me, it reminds me of the '80s, where everybody in society, and people hardly ever talk about this, but mm -hmm. in the news, in your favorite celebrities, everybody was like, "The devil, the devil's here." There's the devil, the de um. and and you know, and and they had. You had Phil Donahue going on like try. They couldn't like they couldn't go another second without trying to find like an mm -hmm. insidious devil worshiping cult people yep. who hated Jesus. That's they. There was a real moral panic in the eighties oh, yeah. about that, and and again and like you pointed out earlier, a lot of that focused in on stuff like D and D <laughs> and comic books and sci fi and. Uh, and and yes, miniature games, uh, hmm. and they're like you're you're playing that that trash, that's some devil worshippers and all this stuff, and it was a big, it it was a big oppressive thing that was pervasive yeah. all through society. There were people that were going to therapists and yeah. getting hypnotized, and and during the hypnosis, somehow they were getting the idea, either suggested or not. That their parents were devil worshippers and performing yeah. satanic rituals on them. So you had adults in in the in the tw in their twenties and thirties. And if you guys don't believe me, look this shit up. This is real shit. That in in the eighties or the twenties, thirty year old people going to therapy, getting out of therapy, and then filing for emancipation against their parents, or even suing their parents yeah. for over a false moral panic. That, yeah, there were, there was, that there were devil worshippers everywhere, that they were under the bed and playing video games. And and, yeah. and I guess what I'm saying is it's I would never deny that racism and hatred doesn't exist. Of course it fucking exists. Like I, I can give you more stories if you want. Sean, fortunately <laughs> for you, you don't have quite as many stories as I do. Uh, I don't have and, which as is kind of cool because I like I've been at this longer, so yeah. I have a few more. But <laughs> while I would not deny that they that that exists, I yeah, think that, this whole let's root it out of gaming and let's let's turn it into like a witch hunt is yeah, is just not great. It's causing it's going to cause more harm than good. And if you want this to be an inclusive place, take my advice. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but anyway, no, but I mean, I, I'll and I'll give you a perfect example of mm. of this. So, all right. So this happened. Uh, uh, what year is that? Twenty fourteen. This happened. Yeah. This this happened. No, this was, this was like the height of Malifaux one point five. So this was two. This is yeah, twenty thirteen. Yeah. I think yeah. twenty thirteen. So it's twenty thirteen, and. Uh, uh, me and Jake are going. We we go to one of our buddies' house. And we're gonna play some Malifaux, right? And it was a big. It, it was a. His house was cool because he had his own, like he had a full like garage type area that was nothing but a gaming room, and it was like the size of like CQ's gaming room. It was awesome, terrain everywhere, whatever. So we yeah. go there to game, and uh, and we're setting up whatever. We're hanging out. And uh, some of these other guys show up. Some of the other, some of their other friends show up. And one of the guys that's there, uh, we'll call him Pete, because it's probably his real name. <laughs> <laughs> but 
<laughs> oh man, sorry, Pete. Put you. But anyways, <laughs> um, he gets in there, and mm. he immediately launches into, man, I just saw a couple gay guys. I was disgusted and all this stuff. He gets into that. He and he just covers. He goes into the A to Z of like shit that you thought you had. You thought that society had stomped oh, no. out about ten years ago, right? Yes. So it's like, yeah, and then and then the Mexicans were here, and he got oh, into Lord. this, and so he just ran the gamut. Ow! And I'm like, and and I'm like the only non-white person there, and uh-huh. uh, at the time this was happening, I don't even I think. I forget Jake was getting a tour of the rest of the house or something. Yeah. And I'm like looking at this guy sideways like this guy is a real like piece of trash. Yeah. <laughs> like this this guy is not cool. Yeah. Uh but anyways, but I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it right now. Whatever. Oh. Right. So we get to oddly enough, the the white nationalists also played Malifo. <laughs> and, and by the time, but uh, anyways, I'll get to this in a sec. But so we end up gaming uh, with the, with the guy, or whatever, and you know, and he's like a temperamental guy, blah blah blah. He's not the worst gamer I've ever played with, but you can tell he's got a little bit of a temper. Like he has a chip on his shoulder the entire time, right? Something uh, to gripe about. Yeah, and I just cannot stand this dude. I just, just like this guy is disgusting. Like I, I cannot abide this dude. Now I could have been like, oh, well, the Warhammer community is an inclusive. I could have done that. <laughs> but here's what ended up happening. Um, mm-hmm. We, uh, we would game together uh, a little bit more over the next few months. We went into playtesting. We were doing playtesting for Malifo 2.0, and. Um, and yeah, and, and he would show up, and and uh, he and I would game together sometimes. And now, and and slowly, like over the the course of the next, I want to say two or three months, it just, for whatever reason, that all that stuff just started to wear away. Like he, he just didn't. He was having fun with us and whatever, and yeah. um, and 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 this also happened with the with the skinhead guy. But basically, at the end of like a few months, they were like, "You know what? I don't really believe in that stuff because he, you know, it's the, similarly." Mark uh, was playing Malifaux with us, and Mark mm-hmm. was like, he was like one of the only gay people in the group, yeah. too. So we had, uh, so and 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 just like your other groups, and and just like our guild ball group, we have a super diverse group. Like that's just. Yeah. It's part of it is the the area that we live in, but the other mm-hmm. part of it too is that, and and this is kind of our point to the people. Kind of, I, I'll say it's my point. You can agree with me if you want. I think you will, but yeah. I think the point was the point I would make to these folks that really want diversity in their gaming group, or they want to see more diversity in gaming, is don't make that. That's not your leading foot. Okay, you don't lead in with that. the The point is is that this is a hobby for people to get away from shit like that. Mm-hmm. And when and yeah, there's gonna be people like Pete here, who you know they come in and you're like, God, I cannot stand this dude. At the end of it, um, you know, at the end of the three or four months, Pete was like, he he was basically he he said. He listened to whatever I had to say, like advice-wise, mm-hmm. be it the yeah. game, be it painting or whatever, and he was cool to hang out with. And he's like – he turned out to be a really um, – he turned out to be a really good guy that, yeah. you know, once you just – basically, once you humanize a group to somebody who thinks in those terms by yeah. presenting them with an individual – this has always been my experience – it, you present them with an individual that they can see as a fellow human being, as a person, and they can respect that person. That will change. That will change their oversimplification of whatever group they they may have a gripe against. Yeah, that happened. Cool. That happened with 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 this guy. That happened with the skinhead guy. And like I said, by the time 
by the time we had parted ways or whatever, I, I, I don't know where they are today, but I, I'm pretty confident that they do not feel the way they do. They did way when back first met them, them, you know, and that, and that they probably, I know at least from the skinhead guy, he was like, cause he, he was moving to, uh, another part of the country. And he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for a Malifaux group up there. And I'm like, yeah, dude, let, let us, let me know if, if I can help put you in touch with a, uh, with another henchman or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I used to feel, he, he told, he straight up pulled me aside and told me, he's like, you know, I used to feel this way that like I couldn't game with, uh, I couldn't game with people if they weren't white. Cause I didn't trust them. Like he straight up told me this and I was like, damn. And I'm like, Hey, and I told him, I'm like, you know, I appreciate the honesty. I yeah. really do. Uh, and he's like, yeah, but you know, you're, you're so cool, man. Like I can't, I'm going to go, I'm going to go move over to this part of the country and I can't wait to like game with some other, with some other people from different cultures and different backgrounds. And I'm like, yeah, like, and the, the cool thing about that too was that, um, this was around the time that like 10 thunders was coming out. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was starting to like, and, and again, this was play testing. So we were talking about where a lot of this stuff was derived from and a lot of the cultural significance of some of these characters and, yeah. And he was getting into that, and he's like, "Man, that's really cool." Like, like he was, he was like, "Dude, those Japanese guys are fucking hardcore, man." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Uh, but it it never became, and the, the the best part about it is, in both instances, it it was never this like group intervention. Like, we exactly. never like held hands in a circle and said, "Okay, we're gonna exercise all the racism out of our group." Because that's yeah. the fucking wrong way to do it, okay? You don't fight othering with othering. You don't yeah. fight hate with hate. It's the way that's the way I've always been taught, and it's, it's what I firmly believe in. And it's like, look, you guys with really well intentions of wanting to root this out wherever you see that. Like, I get that. I love you for it. But yeah. shut up and listen. Because uh, you're you're making it worse. If you are genuinely if you genuinely interested in making it better, shut up and listen. And listen to uh, listen to people that that have had experiences like this. Hmm. And, and because what they're gonna say is gonna be something different than you thought. And and it it and the reason why I know I can guarantee that it will be different than what you thought is because what you're thinking. Is what most people are thinking, and that shit ain't uh-huh. working. Okay, <laughs> your shit is not working. Stop thinking that way. Listen to, oh. like, sit back and listen to people that can that will sh- that are willing to share experiences with you. Because if you really want to, if you really want to affect change, you got you got to start. I know it sounds corny, but you got to start with yourself, and mm-hmm. you have to, and you have to. You have to be willing to hear other points of view, even if you don't agree with them. And you have to – you also have to be willing to let those oppo- – op- people that hold opposing viewpoints, let them let them be a person to you. Like let them be a human to you. I didn't agree with this – with these guys' viewpoints. They didn't agree with mine when we first met them. But we let the hobby – and our kind of, you know, and kind of the atmosphere of the group, we let we let that humanize one another. And and the point, the other point that people miss is these guys had to, I had to see them as people too, oh. right? Because it goes both ways. It's yeah, these people have they have ideas that I am diametrically opposed to, right? They have political views or beliefs that I'm diametrically opposed to, but I can't let that disagreement make them not human to me right yeah. because the minute i dehumanize them i'm doing the same shit that they're guilty of exactly so it's got to go both ways so i mean and- yeah I- I understand like personality wise for different people different people may react differently to different circumstances mm-hmm. If you're an introvert, you may not jump out of the gate and just be like, oh, you know, I'm going to try to hang out with this person or I'm going to yeah. try to hang out with that person. 
uh, extra. Like, oh, Sean, he's going to love me, Sean. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> sometimes you need to pump the brakes on, like, yeah. instantly jumping on top of people and be like, hey, you want to be my friend? It's like, no, <laughs> you're just going to spook people faster that way. But we, uh, uh, Mel, we, we did joke about this on stream before yeah. about like people wanting to be friends with you because then they have the black friend. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me. <laughs> like, like, they, they're like that. marking a bingo card so that they, when the next time they get into a racial argument, well, I have a black friend. <laughs> Oh, gosh, <laughs> like I think I've probably come across that twice doing with myself where I was just like, Why are you trying so hard right now? Like that that was the number one thing that went through my brain. I'm like, you don't have to try this hard, you know, Isn't if you just introduce like, yourself and yeah. you know be chill <laughs> but isn't that like the first thing I don't know about you, but for me, that that immediately sets off alarm bells. So I immediately oh, distrust people that lead in like that. Uh, I, I met this daylights out of me. Yeah, I, I met this dude. This isn't from gaming, but um, through a family acquaintance, we go. We my wife and I. Uh, this is before we had kids or whatever. We went yeah. to this. Um, we went to one of her family gatherings, mm. and there was a guy there. He was an in-law. He was married to one of my wife's um, aunts or cousins or whatever. And yeah. he introduces himself. And the basically the very first thing he says to me is like, oh, well, you're some sort of Asian Islander mix, aren't you? And he just <laughs> leads in with that. And then for the rest of the evening, he, Everyone's talked, to, no, he, he, he talked about how cool it was that I uh -huh. was not white. <laughs> And we, like, and we could sit here, <laughs> and we could sit here and laugh about it, but man, yeah. that was setting off some crazy alarm bells in my head. Like, get the fuck away from this guy. <laughs> best, like, best case scenario, he's some race fetishist. Worst case scenario, he's an actual okay. fucking bigot, and he's you. You get away from that dude, right? So. You. Oh, For me, it's like I feel like I'm probably gonna get sacrificed to some god that I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just like oh man, if I if people like Sean, you are a black gamer, awesome. Like you're like the wet dream of some of these people that really look at at they look at communities and and <clears throat> like society that way. And what a yeah. horrible way to look at like what an horribly oversimplified dehumanizing way to look at people and yeah. society this like that they're just gonna reduce you to your fucking melanin mm -hmm. and and this is this is what's considered here's the thing that i will never understand and and i don't care and i, I don't care if people hate me or disagree with me whatever but i will never understand how that is the quote unquote considered the modern day tolerant view? Fuck that. I trust me. Fuck it that. Really that is, is not. Yeah, you you do not. You, you hey. don't. That is not the defining feature of another person. That is a circumstance of their birth, right? You're Sean. You're Sean, the person that uh, that does gaming and part of a dance crew and does oh. art and you know, likes wrestling. There's all other kinds of cool shit that makes you a cool person. Mm. And like, yeah, he's black too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is part of your identity and it's definitely part of your culture, but it's yeah. not. It's not what defines me as a person. Yeah. It's no. not the end all be all. Like I, at least, you know, and speaking for myself, I don't want to be known as, the Islander gamer guy. Mm -hmm. I want to be known as, oh man, that, you know, like, I want to be known as, wow, that guy paints a lot of shit and he puts up videos and talks trash and it's awesome. <laughs> That's like, to, to, to talk about this, this is like, you know, 14th, 15th down the list of things that I want to be known for. Exactly. Um, and and that's the point of like you want to be inclusive, be inclusive of people. Yeah. Don't 
like don't say whenever you 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 go to these um uh one of my friends that, that she used to work at cq was telling me about she went to a developers conference because she works in mm-hmm. um she works in video games and yeah. she went to a developers conference and they would have and you, you've probably seen some of these too at some of the the cons that you you go to well yeah. no, not really that not the cons we go to but yeah. anyway they had this you know how to be more inclusive in shit, mm-hmm. in whatever, yeah. in gaming or or whatever, right? And you walk in the room, and it's a hundred percent white people. Uh, <laughs> I would be like, you could uh, not drag me into that room. You could not uh, get me. Well, like, you slightly you turn wanna, the other way. It's like, what the, happened? Because if you did manage to drag me in that room, and you grab mm. and and you put the microphone in, in front of me, and they go, "Hey, Octave, what's the matter? Why are gaming communities more inclusive?" You know what I would say. Shit like this. That's why yeah. <laughs> and I would yeah. get up and leave. I'm like, you are missing the point entirely, and yep. you're not contributing to the solution. The solution yeah. takes time, people. It, does. it takes time, and it and and you also have to respect the fact that um, people of different cultures may not like the games that you like. Mm-hmm. Right, and then this That's is true. where this is where the um, and I'll spill a little in over into this, but this is where the the whole you know women in gaming thing comes in, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like that's like the big that's also like the big push right now because of what's going on. It's like oh we need yeah. to get we need to get more people of color in gaming. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like we've always like, been yeah, here. Like, it's would, just you know. <laughs> but but I I would say this to people that say that that like we want to get. Mm-hmm you want to get more people of color in gaming um i'm like well you got to start off with games that people like and and part of the hobby that people will like you want to know like in this is just my theory and i've had it for years um what if, if you want to get specifically if you want to get more asians in a gaming because there's, there's a fair bit of us that are spilling oh, yeah. into miniature gaming if you really want to get asians in the gaming make more anime themed games True. Blank, blank, right? Just do that. Make more. No, we don't want to fucking play 40k. We want to play Gundam K. Like, yeah. put that shit down. We want to play, you know, Tokusatsu games. Like, give us like Common Rider. Mm-hmm. Give us that kind of shit. Give yeah. us, you know, Fist of the North Star. Like, do you could do stuff like that? That's like mm-hmm. one thing you could do if yeah. you really wanted to do that i think you want i think uh, ideally the goal shouldn't be let's get more asians into gaming the goal should or or more black people in the game the goal should be let's just get more people into gaming so exactly. you got to you got to expand um you got to expand the the palette of what's available unfortunately for miniature gaming it has been dominated by white dudes for so long it's a good thing but it also means that the individual that the, the 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 broad taste of what is popular in gaming is dominated by like what white dudes like oh. so and there's nothing wrong with that and you oh, it really you, isn't you don't diminish it that's a, this is the other mistake that a lot of these yeah. industries do. it's like oh let's just replace the color of the superheroes because we're tired of white dudes reading our comic books mm-hmm. um that's not right yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it you doesn't need help. Them white dudes reading your comic books, dude, because that's how you eat. Yeah. Uh, and that's I mean, what, like, that's what got I mean, you there in the first place. I mean, like, yeah, I understand that you want, you know, industries want more people of different diversities. No one says that we haven't been there. Just that, you know, yeah. in our communities, we're just kind of like, oh, you know, I secretly read. BNC, you know, there's like the one comic shop that always says, "Oh, hey, Sean, how you doing?" It's like I'm doing fine. Do you have mm-hmm. these comics? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. And you know, I buy my comics. I go in. I take my stuff home, and you that's all. Out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no one. Story. <laughs> one needs to know. Hey, put it on the board. Right. Well, there, there's that part comics. of it. But if they did, let's say, you know. I would it would I think it would be kind of cool if they had you know a, a a couple more Filipino superheroes or whatever. Yeah. That would be cool. But but don't 
don't go don't out of like, your way in order to just make. Well, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go out of your way just to make that. Like, make a good character, and more importantly, don't just like go. Oh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna take Batman and and color the him with a darker crayon. Exactly. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, look, man, we made Batman a Filipino. And all and everybody that loves Bruce Wayne would be like, "What the fuck did you just no. do, you you idiots?" And I would be like, "Hey, man, I'm insulted. Like you you did that yeah. just as a show for me." Exactly. Why like, couldn't my you fr- just like write a good character? Yeah. Why could one of my just- friends and I talked about that in comics where we wish a lot of people would just make the character initially, yeah. their background, where they cut, you know, like yeah. And, know and what all their of that family lifestyle is. Right, and, and all that can come to light in, like, issue five, six, yeah. seven. right? It's not, exactly. you don't, that's not what you lead in with, and it, it's, you see that with a lot of this, a mm. lot of this, quote-unquote, movement to do that. It's, yeah. it's hey, just all, so wrong. <laughs> in all honesty, I would love that if comics are gonna go and do, you know, even if it's a person of diversity, five <laughs> issues in, they have done all this stuff. You know, they fought bad guys and all that type of stuff. And then one issue is them just like finally taking off the hood. And then you know what you know, the person actually is. Instead yeah. of going in and being like, hey, you know, <laughs> this person's from you know, the backwoods of Georgia. You know who you did know? that? In comics, mm. um, Spawn. Spawn. Yeah, you, that's you remember true. Spawn? The, the first issues, of Sp- the first like three or four issues of Spawn, you'd never got to see Spawn, and you're like, oh, this character Spawn is sick, man. Oh, he went to hell yeah. and all this other shit. And then like three or three or four comics in, you realize, oh, Spawn, Spawn's a black dude. Yeah. Uh, and you were like, and and you're like, oh, that's cool. Exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't this big, you know, comic books weekly. You'll never get a spot. Yeah. Look at a black spot. Isn't that great? And you're like, exactly. What the, like, you didn't up, have to dude. lead with that. Yeah. No, well, that's what I like. A good character. Get us excited about Spawn, and then be like, hey, guess what? Spawn. He's got another interesting thing about his background. We'll check mm-hmm. it out. Right. Canvas says whenever he buys a comic, he has to rescue minorities from oppression before he can leave. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, white savior Canvas. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, you know, Spawn definitely was one of the first comics where you know, I picked it up and read through, you know, some Did you of it. Know Spawn was black when you first started reading Spawn? I didn't know. Yeah. I was like, oh, this character's cool, you know, yeah. he's doing all this stuff, he uh, he works kind of as like a Hellion type minion person, but he's trying to be a better person and a hero, and I'm like, this guy's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, like, it's really weird that most of the characters I've liked are mostly alien-based. Okay. It's weird, because like, I know a lot of people be like, Sean, why do you like Lobo? And I'm like, he's an alien. Like, the last of his species. No, obviously, this guy's going through the ringer on, like, identity crisis. Mm-hmm. Even though that, yeah, he was the one that destroyed his own planet. But yet, at the same time, I'm sure internally, it's like saying to himself, no, kind of sucks that I'm, like, the only one. But yet, at the same time, I enjoy the fact that I'm the only one. Yeah, I'm like, remorse. Yeah. After he yeah. killed his planet. <laughs> but, you know, he's such a weird character. And, you know, I go off of characters more than I go off of, you know, what they look yeah. like. It's not like I mean, you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know what? I really need a black hero. I'm gonna exactly. Go to a, you, you, at least you're like, no, I want to read something interesting. Yeah. Cool. And um, a few times at... Uh, even though that you know the person's like ethnicity and all that type of stuff out of the gate, I was like, "What? I don't mind this character. They're unique. They're different. They have different situations and scenarios 
that are going on in their lives was when they had uh, Miss Marvel, which is Kamala Khan, mm. and Miles Morales. Those were the only two that I was like, it's fine. No, Miles because Morales was was really interesting because they just made a great yeah. character. Like they made uh, because... a really cool, a really cool character, and yeah. and they didn't and they did so that was very they did so in a way that was respectful of Peter Parker and exactly um, you know right. So you so there's definitely there's definitely like success stories where they were yeah. able to do that. I'm not gonna sit there and say every single one of them needed to be like. Hey, check this person's at person out. They're the Green Lantern, but they're this ethnicity. I'm like, oh man, Green Lanterns. I I need to talk to you for a second. Come over here. Do you think? That Come over here for a second. You, you had this guy, uh-huh. and he was kind of a flop. You had that guy, which was an Irish drunk. You had this guy. But obviously still has problems because you know you put yourself into a hole and killed off his girlfriend in a very gruesome way and all of a sudden you're gonna have John Stewart it- to fix everything. I'm like, okay, mind you, John Stewart is great. <laughs> and you give him some different powers and he wasn't from the military and all that type of stuff. It's like no he has to be from the military because all the other ones that we did, they're from the military. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, get a pass, but it's like a, you know, I just like his personality because they didn't do terrible things to this guy. You know, in the writing room, like all the others, they wrote them so poorly where it's just like, I don't like any of them. <laughs> so with, with, uh, you know, with all these, with all these folks that like, want to fix diversity in in hobby whether like i said whether that be gaming or comics or dnd or whatever do you think that there's kind of a misguided hero complex going on with them individually like oh i'm you know what i'm just gonna fix this right like it's so easy like i'm just gonna mm-hmm. fix this right now and here yeah. we're gonna get everyone in the circle and you're gonna do what i say Mm-hmm. That's what that seems like. That's fucked, man. Like it really that's... is, and you know, I know that we haven't like we're mostly like focusing on gaming type topics and all yeah. that type of stuff, which is you know, the truth about it. I think like the first time that I had actually gone to Anime Expo and cosplaying, uh-huh. that was like one of the weirdest things. Ever in my entire life, because I think when I first went, and I think my wife can attest to this, I was like one of maybe two or three black people during that year yeah. at Anime Expo, and it was weird. What I was year like, was that? "Oh man, um, I want to say I was in high school, so probably about two thousand five, two thousand six, somewhere oh, wow. around there." Wow. And it was strange, uh-huh. and I was like, okay, you know, it may, uh, maybe it hasn't branched out as much as possible. You know, the whole anime conventions and all that type of stuff. Everyone knew about Comic-Con and all that type of stuff. Sure. I mean, like, I even talked to one um, person that said he was a big Star Trek nerd back when yeah. he was younger, yeah. and... The first time they had ever costumed anything was when his sister purposely lied to him about that there was a kind of mini convention slash like Star Trek viewing at oh, this no. one movie theater. So he made this costume and all this type of stuff. Mind you, this man's uh <laughs> this man was African American and oh, he no. made this costume and everything and went to this movie theater oh. thinking Okay, cool. And then, in order to find out that his sister basically pulled a huge prank on him, I'm like, oh. God damn, man. But he's like, you know what? That huge prank ended up bringing me in the business for making costumes for movies and sci fi things and fantasy and all that type of stuff. So, you know, without my sister's um, prank, <laughs> you Being know. an awful person. 
you were wouldn't have that. gone into like what he wanted to do later on down the line. That's actually a pretty dope story. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I mean, like actually getting to talk to him as a person, it was kind of like really impressive. So in the mm. case of my situation of Anime Expo, I was like dressed as. I think Naruto was a new hotness at the time. Yeah. Fresh out the gate. Um, or like went into its long, long slog tirade thing. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, for me, yeah, it was kind of weird. But yeah, at the same time, too, I had to kind of tell myself, you know what? This is what you like to do. This is what you enjoy. So what? You know? Mm-hmm. And you know, people complimented me on like like my costume and all that type of stuff. And this was like before the huge costume cosplay war type stuff, where everyone's one upmanship became like top tier. Yeah, so I think the entire costume was like made out of cloth. <laughs> so yes. just straight up hey, cloth. Way more comfortable. <laughs> and like, of course, you know, you had the few people where you know, parents, you know own like a steel mill and they're able to make chain mail or you know parents used to do ren fair type stuff so they have like these did you have and anybody come up stuff. to you and go naruto is in black did you ever have anybody do that i didn't have that problem mm. that's why i'm so like bewildered by how outwardly like particular people are becoming of like People yeah, that are dressed up as kind of a Harley Quinn, right? Or yeah. you know, Spider Man, like the original Spider Man. Or it's like, why are you guys being picky about this? Like the latest thing someone had like brought to my attention was um, Starfire. I'm like, yeah, okay. So why is there a problem with Starfire? It's like, well, you no, know, we're protecting Starfire because you know, since she's in the the Titans, I was like, wait. You talking about the live action Titans thing? It's like, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's you know classified as African American. I'm like, she's an alien. She's an alien. Her skin is orange, dude. It's orange, like there are no people on this planet that are orange unless they sit there and get a suntan for like twenty four hours straight. Yeah. Like, and the, what is that, going that on whole here? Starfire thing was like. You know, that actress was a pretty dope actress. The yeah, problem, she is. The problem we had, or look, the, I, I say we, cause I, but I don't, I don't really have a horse in this game, uh, in this race, but <laughs> the, the problem, I think the, the problem that, that at least uh, as I saw it was that her costume looked like trash. Exactly. Like, just fix her, who, it's not about her skin, just fix the freaking costume. <laughs> No, it's like great and, actress. And instead of, Not you know, here. actually listening to that, they decided let's just make it a race thing, like immediately. You're like, wait, no. wait. Just fix her costume. It has nothing mind to you, do with her. Just yeah. Mind you, there was a cosplayer um like probably within like two months of like when they initially showed that. Uh-huh. That came out same race. Yeah different costuming and i was like that's the costume that i want yeah <laughs> no it, I, think I saw that picture i think i know what you're talking about yeah yeah I, I mean it was so weird how when initially you had people that came and wanted to do cosplay this a lot of the cosplay community also needs to kind of start you know being a lot more accepting of things because because you don't directly look like the character doesn't mean rag on people so hard that they decide to quit cosplay altogether or, That's... you know, start feeling like the whole world's out to get them. Yeah. If they Is like this... the costume, it's fine. Isn't no? That the in, the, isn't that the central point of cosplay? Yeah, it's Is self-expression. That you're, it, that, you know, you're, it doesn't, you, you are you are just paying tribute to a character and exactly. it, it doesn't matter. And in fact, it, it's kind of like karaoke. It would be like, exactly. it would be like telling somebody that they couldn't, you know, they couldn't perform a rap song because they're not black. Exactly. You, you can't do that for mix a lot is black because every white dude sings baby got back. 
on karaoke. Yeah, Max, a fun song. Bro, I don't care. Totally gonna sing Baby Got Who you are. I, me <laughs> and my wife, we sing Push It. That's our exactly. favorite. That's our favorite song to sing on karaoke. Exactly. But like, I mean, like, I, I have to agree. Your metaphor is correct. It's like telling someone, hey, you know, you can't sing a country song because you're not. It's like, what yeah. the? <laughs> you're not white. You can't sing Garth Brooks up there. Meanwhile, there's like some guy that's in China that loves Garth Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> that's singing the living daylights out of it. And you're going to tell him? But yeah, hey. cosplay is, is literally karaoke for, for, you know, for fans. Exactly. So you're, you're, but but it's a, it's, it's, we'll call it full body emulation, right? It really cosplay is. Cosplay is yeah. full body emulation for fans. It should not matter what body you start with. It mm -hmm. ma what matters is is what and and this is our in, this is the entire crux of our discussion here. What matters is is your passion for the hot. What matters is what what you're doing to uh, creatively express yourself and how you yeah. choose to enjoy that. And this the minute you turn it into a, a demographics game yeah. or an identity game, well, you've kind of fucked it for everybody. That's, exactly. that's that's my main point. It's true. I mean, like, half of the time whenever I meet us players or people that are just starting out, you know, yeah, you know that they're, ooh, they're trying to work on their craft and all that type of stuff. But guess yeah. what? They may have created something, done something with a prop that you yourself could not figure out how to do. You should be applauding them for it because or, it's a craft. Or maybe you know? maybe they they maybe their costume looks like shit. All things considered, and but you're like, you know what? We all start somewhere. Exactly, and we all start from the bottom. And you're gonna nope. keep learning, and you know, and like, I, the cosplay thing. I'm not a cosplayer, but the shit that I see the people do to cosplayers is like, holy crap, that is just awful, and. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a, I remember when, uh, when cosplay was not a popular thing and, you know, mm. people were, people would just wear bits and pieces of the costume yeah. of a character that they liked. And then when no, it started to become, jeans. yeah, <laughs> uh, when it started to become a real hobby, mm. um, you know, the normal thing was, okay, that's a little weird, but sure, right? <laughs> the, a lot of people, the mainstream was like, yeah, it's a little weird, but sure. And then it, I don't know what the hell happened, but it, then it <laughs> went through this period of, okay, that's really awesome. Like, and then yeah. you saw professional cosplayers, and yeah. you would see, like, they would do, like, the reality TV, I forget, the, the <clears throat> cosplay hero, I think is what it was called on yeah. sci-fi. Uh, and you're like, oh, man, these people do some crazy awesome shit. And then, and and so you're really into it, and it goes through the mainstream, and then, then, um, then the bad side starts coming out. Up. Or it turns into a competition. People are putting each other down on social media. Oh, so and so stole my idea in order to make Iron Man costume. I'm like, what? <laughs> All of us are rich and have daddy's allowances. Some of us have to make things out of cardboard. Guess yeah. what? Some of the people that make the stuff out of cardboard, like, mm -hmm. wait, how did you make this thing? Because it looks exactly like the armor. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the so uh, so canvas says, and I think this is actually this is a half serious question. It's a uh, he he says, how long until cosplay is trans appropriation because you're changing from one thing to another? So the interesting thing about my take on it is, from what I understand, because I'm trying to learn the rules. I'm just trying to learn the rules. I, from what I understand, is you have to follow the uh, what was it? What's it called? The um, uh, the oppression uh, oppression the, stick. The, pro the progressive the progressive stack. That's what it's called. You have to follow the progressive stack. You cannot mm. cosplay in, in these. Rules are stupid. I should point out, but you cannot cosplay some. You cannot cosplay somebody who is below you on the progressive stack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, I'll, and then 
a, a, a white person cannot cosplay a black character. Uh, a straight person cannot cosplay a gay person. Uh, a cis person cannot cosplay a trans character. That's, from what I understand, those are the rules. You can cosplay up the progressive stack. You can't cosplay down the progressive stack, which is absolutely really bullshit, right? Yep. Like I said, using using that same metaphor for karaoke, you can't sing songs that black people the, the black people perform if you're white. You can't sing songs that gay people perform if you're straight. That is yep. that would be so stupid, and it defeats the entire point of karaoke. And again, by by extension, cosplay. Mm. So, but yeah, you know, I know you're, I know you're half joking there, Canvas, but that's, yeah, like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's an actual thing. You can't, you can't cosplay down the progressive stack, which is, that's shit, man. Like if, <laughs> if here's a character you really like, mm -hmm. but they're, you know, maybe you like them because of that. You're like, oh. dude. Like maybe you're a white guy that's like real, like you're real super built, and you have like curly hair. Like maybe you got a like the Jew fro or whatever, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna cosplay. Then this would be just completely hated. Like this guy would, I don't know. They would beat him up. It, you know, people would beat him in the streets. But like, what if he's like, I'm gonna be Nick Cage. Right, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be because I'm kind of built like him, and I, he's like my favorite character. Like oh, I know what's the funny thing. Yeah, I've actually seen someone cosplay Luke Cage. You saw what? I've actually seen someone cosplay Luke Cage. You seen a, 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 like a white dude cosplay Luke Cage? Yeah. Did how was, was like, that received? I was like, rightfully so. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, man, you like Luke Cage? It's cool. And you like Luke Cage? I'm not gonna get mad at you for that. <laughs> you know, that's stupid. If you're gonna get mad at a what man that likes. <laughs> Maybe he grew up in the same environment that Luke Cage grew up in, and he, you know, is like, right. yeah, you know, I, I can totally understand this character. Right. Like, I'm not gonna tell him no. <laughs> what really gets confusing is now. So take those, take those quote unquote quote rules. Mm -hmm. and let's pretend. Like, what if you cosplayed uh, an anime character? That's confusing as fuck, right? Because are you are you cosplaying a white character? Are you cosplaying a Japanese? Or is it cultural? What is it? Is it cultural appropriation? Because you're right. What if you cosplay as let's say Goku? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, he Goku's name is Japanese, but the dude is a straight up alien. Yeah, exactly. And all of his features are white. That's why I always so... throw at people. It's like he's an alien. I should be able to just be like, Goku. <laughs> right? Like, what if you. I, I don't understand. If you're. Uh, so, if you're. Let's say you're. Uh, uh, let's say you're a white. You're, you're a blonde kid. Mm -hmm. And you cosplay as Naruto. Well, mm -hmm. you look like Naruto. Yeah. But somebody could point out, oh, wait. Naruto is Japanese, though. Because yeah. his name is Naruto. And mm -hmm. he's in, the, and he's the, he was made by Japanese people. So I don't. These rules are stupid, and they come apart they when you apply any level of logic to them. It's really <laughs> the true point, because the, the point you know, is you just just enjoy. For God's sake, you want to get you want to be more inclusive of people in these spaces. You, shut the fuck up with this stuff. Just. It, like make sure that it's fun and enjoyable and it's welcoming and that people get away from this garbage that you intend to drag into mm. an otherwise wonderful thing. Yeah, I mean, That's if you like hobbies and you know, things, and it really should not stop you from you know, pursuing what you want to pursue. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. It's just one of those deals where, like, yeah, you know, there are times where stuff will get muddled. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell people, hey, you know, things are going to be easy in order to just, like, trudge through. Because, you know, there are certain things where it's like, well, you know, depending on if you've been in the culture, do you understand, like, the meanings behind some of the stuff? It's if it's like... 
cosplay world and comic book world and tabletop gaming world, I'm, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> is, there, is there such thing as disrespectful cosplay? <sighs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't know the answer to that. I, I'm asking you. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, like, we've only done, like, the ones where I know they're kind of like, ooh, I don't know if you really should have done that, which, you know, usually goes all the way back to vaudeville. <laughs> Here's uh okay, so you're talking like uh, blackface, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if they somebody just came out and did blatant blackface, that would yeah. be yes, I, I I'm gonna agree. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's super bad. That's like one of the few cases where I'm just like, uh, or if somebody I'm let's say bad. let's say somebody was playing into an awful like racial a negative racial stereotype, mm-hmm. right? Let's say yeah. like this is just me again controversial opinion that we just said yeah if a white dude wanted to cosplay nick uh, luke cage we would be totally cool with it right but if that same white dude decided he was gonna cosplay luke cage but let's say he attached some horrible um racist stereotype to that like maybe mm. I'm in, I'm just gonna say it, it's gonna be super upsetting to some people, but let's say he's like, okay, I'm gonna cosplay as Luke Cage and I'm gonna walk around with a bucket of chicken, and yeah. uh, and, and an ankle bracelet or something, like something <laughs> super awful. Right? Then I then I have to be like, uh, like yeah, you yeah, need to get no. the fuck out of here because that is, I, yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna try to save you some trouble from like other people. I won't. It's like I won't be the first person in order to be like ah, right. I will be that person that's like, dude, no, no, N- no, leave. Just, like, just go finish your bucket of chicken someplace else. Not even, not even me being mad at you, but just so that we don't have to clean your brains off the floor. Leave. <laughs> like that exactly. would be. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, so so yeah, there's a line there. But uh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't our think lines, that, yeah. It's just that I think a lot of the times, whenever people go into like these warring situations, or you know, there's different lines of like culturally being disrespectful, and then like you know, uh, situations where you're just like you just want to be that. Like, no one's gonna get mad at you. Or dressing up as a oni, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, someone might get mad at you if you decide to bring like the Shinto religion into it. Oh, for sure. If, like if you're disrespectful of that, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> See, Canvas wants chicken. Me too, dude. <laughs> I did. I did go to Popeyes today, man. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. Popeyes wow. is like. At least tomorrow, you're. I was having a bad. I was. Ha- I was. I was having a bad morning this morning, and uh, lunch rolls around, and I'm like, you know what? I deserve a Popeye just... chicken sandwich. I I told myself that I deserve uh... this, <laughs> and I got in the car and went to Popeyes, and I'm in the drive-through, right? I'm in the drive-through line, and I see this Filipino dude walking past the car. And I roll the window down, and I'm like, "No chicken for you, Jose." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> because Jose and I always end up at Popeyes, and it doesn't matter what city we're in or anything. We we need to. Where's Jose's probably playing PSO two right now. He's probably looking for me. He's like, "Where's Octo?" He's, he's <laughs> you two get the Popeye connection. Every city we ever go to, ever, Jose, if we're driving to another city and like we're hungry, like oh man, we could pull over, we gotta eat something. We yeah. just for we just like we have this uh, psychic connection to Popeyes, and we just find a Popeyes, and we're like, oh shit, there's Funny. Popeyes right here. <laughs> we stop Funny. and have Popeyes <laughs> all the time, and. So funny. We've been to like probably four or five different Popeyes in the San Diego area. We've been to Popeyes all up in this area because it's like we're going to go, you know, we're going to go to Addie's or we're going to go to Paradise Games or whatever. 
and we always find the Popeye. It's like, you know, that one, the one in, in um, uh, I guess that's Vista. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, Vista. it's like one exit up from Paradise Games. Yeah. Always, and that Popeye's is the weirdest Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a weird one. That one, that Popeye's is like, it's, it looks like a closet. Like, you can't even <laughs> barely stand inside the Popeye's to order. Mm-hmm. And they, there's, like, tables in there, but, like, they don't fit humans. Like, who are these <laughs> hobbits that go to Popeye's? <laughs> but, uh, and, and every time we go in there, it's, like, the strangest shit happens around that pot. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, uh, man. Man, it's like, I will, I, I have spent, like, some of these feeds just talking about how much I love that Popeye's chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I like like you, you said, the world passions. just <laughs> world needs to gain its, you know, camaraderie. Can we all yeah. just agree to enjoy pop that we enjoy Popeyes? Can we, as a as a society? I know that there's going to be one person that's going to be listening to this, like, no man is about oh. them eleven herbs and spices. <laughs> <laughs> I need my KFC. Dude, KFC is the KFC is the consolation prize. I'm gonna say <laughs> it is. It's when you can't. Damn. There's, there's a KFC up here, like closer. Uh, the up here, the KFC is closer to me than the Popeyes. Mm-hmm. And it and you know when we were like, oh man, I want chicken. I'm talking with my kids, my wife and my yeah. kids. I'm like, well, I want uh, chicken. And like I'm like, can I drift to Popeyes? And my wife is like. That's too far. We're gonna and you gotta wait in that line. Can we just get chicken somewhere? I'm like, all right, fine. I'll go to KFC. And it's like <laughs> sad. T- it's like we gave up on our dream. Like, it's oh, like the man. booty prize for you. Yeah, it was the consolation prize. Oh man, we like El Pollo Loco more than than uh, KFC. Like if we if we, Damn, if we have really? to back off. Yeah, if we, if we have to back oh. off the Popeyes train, we and. We, like the uh, oh no, maybe El Pollo Loco's gotten better over the years because I used to be like Pollo Loco was okay in my standards back in well, like the night. Trash. <laughs> their salsa is trash, and the you know a lot of the their chicken is it's okay. It's yeah, you know, but I don't know. I like their little salad thing and. I don't know. Um, like, At the end of the day, wife, I just like chicken, like straight up. I will have. My wife like loves El Pollo Loco. Yeah. It's like I haven't had El Pollo Loco ever since I was in high school. Oh wow! And it, mostly it was because, like, back in the '90s, like El Pollo Loco, like the chicken was okay. The corn just tasted like I was eating soap. <laughs> yeah, their corn is kind of weird. I will say that. It's just like so much depression, whatever. Like the only thing that you're really excited about was the darn tortilla instead. Oh, <laughs> oh man, my camera went out here for a second. Hold on, that's why you have a frozen frame there. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna swap batteries real quick. That means that's my cue that we're not going much longer. <laughs> Most likely. But let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so in the longest... We just got to the, the good part, which is discussing chicken, which is my favorite thing to discuss. Yeah, I mean, in the long and short of it, you know, I'm just hoping that, like, things kind of get back to normal, or at least as normal as normal can be, mm-hmm. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. No. Um, it's, for the most it's, part, I'm just missing... Actually, being able to hang out with people and all that. Yeah, uh, we're, you know, we're gonna get in a game soon, man. We gotta. Yeah. Just you know, the communities and the world just need to, oh, you know, take a step back and realize that each individual is like a different person versus like lumping everyone into like a giant pot and being like. Ah, uh, these people, uh, those people, you know, it's yeah. like, no. it's like, understand that, yes, 
that had happened was bad. We need to learn from it. It's what we can do as people. And actually try to be a union of people that are able to get along and coexist. You know? Yeah. Like, it's bad enough that a person like me who isn't into, you know, as as the eighties would like to call it call it drugs, sex, violence, you know. <laughs> and it's like I just wanna live a nice, simple life where, you know, I don't have to be checking my side and, you know Sure. Figuring out, you know, was coming to get me and all that type of stuff like yeah i do think that i do think that there is a there is a a a really really profound point that (laughs) all of this is making that yeah we have to do better i get that right we we definitely have to do better and there's and there's you, you know and we there's there's things that we need to be able to bring to the forefront but we need to be able to discuss those things because we, if we all, in my opinion, I think 95, 99% of everybody wants to, we all want to fix this and do better. I don't think there right. is a, I don't, I really don't think that there's a large portion of people that are like, no, it's totally fine. We all want to fix these things and do better. But in order to, to do, do it that, okay. We need to we need to have honesty, and we need to yeah. have we need to be able to see one another as people. It's it's the problem happens when you oversimplify things and you look at and you define everybody by their skin. It's the same. It's like popping open the hood of the car and you realize it's running on the same engine that the racism that caused all this is running yep. on. You can't. You can't def- you can't define your solution by basing it in what the, the the same mentality that the problem is steeped in. Right? You have to, like I said earlier, like you, you, people have to see one another as as human beings and as individuals. And yeah, even that dude Pete that walked into the gaming group and started spouting all this trash, that dude's a person, and I have to. I have to put my I have to put my judgment and all of that stuff away for a minute, find out who this person is, why they ended up that way, and get yeah. to know them and we get to see each other as people and guess what? That's where change actually happens. Cool. Um, it's not going to happen with well tr- it's not like well Sean is black therefore treat him this way. Well, this person's a woman, therefore treat them this like that's that's the fucking playbook of the bigot. Yep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're like, oh, well, hand them a lollipop instead. Like it, it doesn't. That's not gonna fix anything. Your core exactly. mentality is still the same. And those and and the worst part about it is squelching the dialogue hides the bigotry. Where you want it out in the, you want people, you want the, the people on the other side. And yes, it is as awful as their ideas may be. You want that out in the open. You want them to have to be able to to say that in the open, so that you can confront it in a res, in a in, in a respectful a, manner. In a respectful <laughs> manner, and I guarantee people would, you know, everybody would walk away from that discourse. Um, a little bit better than where they started, but mm-hmm. we can't. We can't even have those conversations as a society. It's it's like I said. It's the, what color lightsaber do you have? We can't talk, <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I, I, bring, I bring everything back to you talking trash on Star Wars. It's like, oh, well, his blaster fires red lasers. You can't. You just need to kill that guy immediately. <laughs> like, he's a good guy and he accidentally picked up a red oh. blaster or just shoot him anyway so we don't know <laughs> like, what? It, I don't remember I think they're, in the original Star Wars they did use uh, stormtrooper blasters like yeah. when, they were, when they broke into the Death Star or whatever but, mm. but that's my point it's like we can't 
when you the minute you oversimplify groups of people or you start lumping people into groups or camps or whatever it becomes painfully easy to dehumanize them and once you can dehuman dehumanize people then you can pull all kinds of awful shit on them mm -hmm. <laughs> right and that's where we are today so yep. anyways that was my my soapbox thing <laughs> um i like this fair and balanced soapbox <laughs> I like this. That came out well. Yeah, I like that goal. Cool. I'm proud of it. All right. So I am going to call it a night because it is super late. Do yep. you have any final like parting thoughts or anything? Any bits of advice for the, for the people that want to increase diversity in their gaming group or their life or, or whatever? Uh, well, for the most part, just... Treat people, you know, the way that you want to be treated. You want to be treated like trash, so, you know, don't go into blazing, running over everyone, thinking, oh, they'll like me if I keep bashing their skull in. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's not how you treat people. If you want to make friends in gaming communities, you just talk to them about just basic gaming stuff, you know? Yeah. Doesn't have to be an upfront type situation, you know. Just having general chats while you know you're in a gaming store is always a great start. Mm -hmm. you, know, you start learning about the way you know things that people like and what they're looking for and all that. But, so you know, you, in other words, so if you show up to the to the uh, to CQ to, for some guild ball, you don't want mm -hmm. people, uh, you know, you're about to set up a game with me, and then some some guy comes up and says. Hey, Sean, it's time we talk about race. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be like, um... We about dude. to start this game, man. Shut up. <laughs> That's what I would say. I'd probably be like, um... We will fix your bigotry another day, sir. <laughs> I, I, I came here in order to have fun, not to be discouraged. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So with that, <laughs> we're going to call the stream to a close here. I want to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Bye.